of the Jesus Most High. So tonight's topic is called the order of marriage. The order of marriage. Tonight I'm going to be dealing with marriage for both men and women. Okay, I'm going to start with the sisters first. Okay, then I'm going to deal with the brothers. Now, let's open up with the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4. Let's start there. Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, Rain. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the most that God is commanding us through the apostle Paul, that the things that were written aforetime were written for us to learn. You understand? So we don't repeat the same mistakes that our forefathers and foremothers did in the past. So guess what? The most that God is teaching us that we must be in tune with our history so we don't repeat our history again when we go off and get judged once more again. Read again, verse 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So now the patient, the comfort we're going to find, we were only going to find comfort in the word of God. We're not going to find comfort elsewhere, but in the word of the most High God. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2. Sirach 2, in the Apocrypha. Sirach chapter 2 and verse, Sirach 2 and verse 10. Watch this. Start of verse 9. Sirach 2 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 9. Go ahead. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good mm -hmm. and for everlasting joy and mercy. You see that when you fear the Lord, if you fear God, meaning you keep his commandments, you're going to hope for good. You hope for good things because you're keeping God's laws. But if you're breaking God's commandments, you cannot hope for good. Neither can you have for everlasting joy nor mercy because the Lord will destroy you. So we must repent, come back to this book. Read again verse 9. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 9. Read. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good mm -hmm. and for everlasting joy and mercy. Go ahead. Look at the generations of old and see. Mm. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? You see that? You see what Sarag is telling us? He says we must look at the generations of old. We must look at what our forefathers did and what our foremothers did in the past. He says look at the generations of old. Our forefather Abraham, Isaac. Jacob, Jeremiah, Joshua, Moses, Adam, so on and so forth. What they did in the past is that did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? When our forefathers put their trust in the Lord and our foremothers, they were not confused. They were not lost. They, didn't, they, they were not in a situation where they don't know what to do. Mm -mm. Because they understood. We put our trust in the Lord. We trust in that says the Lord. They were not confused nor confounded. Go ahead. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? If you abide in the fear of the Lord, which is God's commandment, what do you fear? You fear his judgment. Read. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? You see that when we call upon the Lord, the Lord does not despise us. But we must call upon the Lord when we want to, and in repentance. We must not call upon the Lord when we're in the midst of sin and we don't want to change. The Lord will not hear nothing we say. Understand that. Get that in First John chapter 3, verse 22. Let me touch on that. First John 3, verse 22. Watch this. First John chapter 3, verse 22. Go ahead. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him mm -hmm. because we keep his commandments. You see that? Whatsoever, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Meaning we receive of the things that we ask from the Lord because we keep his commandments. So when we don't keep God's commandments, when you pray, your prayer is being blown by the wind. You understand? We must keep God's commandments so the Lord can hear our prayers. Go ahead. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You see that? We must first do the things that are pleasing in the sight of the Lord, which is keeping his commandments. Then when we ask, meaning when we pray, then the Lord will give us the things that we ask him for. You understand? Um, give me that in 1 John chapter 5 now. 1 John chapter 5, read verse 14. Watch this. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Come on. That if we ask anything according to his will, 
he heareth us. You see that if we ask anything according to his will, according to his laws, the Lord will hear us. Watch this. What does it mean to ask? Give me that in Matthew 21, verse 22. Matthew 21, verse 22. Let's understand what it means when he says, whatsoever we ask, okay? The confidence we have in him when we ask, okay? Read that. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Great. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. He says you must ask in prayer. That's the ask he's talking about. Prayer. We ask in prayer. Come on. Believing ye shall receive. Believing you shall receive. What does it mean? Believing you shall receive. Give me that in John chapter 7 verse 38. John 7. John 7 verse 38. Watch this. John chapter 7 verse 38. Go ahead. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, mm -hmm. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see that thing? To believe, you must believe according to as it is written in the Holy Bible. As the scripture has said, that saith the Lord. You understand? That's what it means to believe. According to as it is written. Believing means you believe what's written and you do what is written. That's what it means to believe. Believing is as you shall receive. Go back to chapter 2, verse 10 again. Okay, because he says we must look at the generations of old, our forefathers in the past. Read what you got. Come on. Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 10. Read. Look at the generations of old and see. Mm -hmm. Come on. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Read. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Read. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? You see that? Who did the Lord despise that called upon him in prayer? But you must be keeping God's commandments. You understand? Or you must, be, you must acknowledge that you are in the midst of sin and you repent of your sin. Then the Lord will begin to deal with you. You understand? So now, watch this. Give me, let's go back to the beginning because it says, the things that are written are four times. Go back to where was it? Go back to Romans 16 verse 4. The things that were written are four times were written for us to learn. Read. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning. The whatsoever, the whatsoever things that were written is what? The scriptures. Go ahead. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see that thing? Because when the, the, the scriptures is what's going to give us patience. We study how our forefathers dealt with trials and tribulation. We learn how they endured. Then you learn patience. Comfort when we're in trouble. The scriptures will comfort us. You understand? That we keep God's commandments and the Lord will give us comfort on this one. Now watch this. Give me Genesis 2, 21. Okay? Let's go back to the beginning. Okay? Genesis 2, verse 21. Watch this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. Mm -hmm. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So now this is when after Adam um, was given wisdom, was given a job, was given responsibilities as a man and as a God on earth. You understand? Here's what the Lord did for our forefather Adam. Read again verse 21. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Read. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and mm -hmm. he slept. Read. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Come on. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. You see that? So out of the rib of Adam, Eve, our foremother, was created. Woman. You understand? Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. You see that the definition of the word woman means out of man. The word woman means out of man. You understand? Sisters, they come from us. From the time of the creation. Okay? The woman was created out of Adam. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of 1 Corinthians. Okay? Yeah, let me just, just touch on that thing. 1 Corinthians. I'm going to touch on it again, but I just want to touch on it now. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay, because the women they come from us. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter eleven, read verse seven. Watch this. 
first Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Read. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Mm -hmm. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Stop right there. The man is the image and glory of God. The black man is the image and glory of God. Let me put it in layman's terms. The black man on earth is a physical embodiment of the most like God. Let me say that again. The black man on this planet earth, he is the physical depiction of the most high God. When you see the black man, you see what God looks like. Read that thing again, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Go ahead. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Come on. As much as he is the image and glory of God. The man is the image and glory of God. So the man is made from the image of God. Go ahead. But the woman is the glory of the man. You see that? The woman is the glory of the man. So the woman was not created out of the image of God. The black man was made out of God's image. The black woman was created out of the black man. So we are both, the black man and the black woman, both we were not made in the image of God. The black man was made in the image of God. The black woman was taken out of the black man. Read it again, verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Go ahead. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Mm -hmm. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Great. Right. But the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. Now, I'm not going to go continue. Go back to Genesis 2. Genesis 2.23. Read that thing again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. She was taken out of man, meaning out of man, meaning from man. Okay, go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. Now, this is our forefather Adam prophesying what marriage will look like. He's prophesying based on the marriage that he had. Because Adam is married at this point. You understand? Adam has a wife. Our foremother Eve. He is now explaining what marriage is going to look like. What marriage must look like. Meaning what? The two must be one flesh. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. The things that were written at four times were written for our men. Okay? Read that. Matthew 19 verse 4. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Go ahead. And he answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? You see that this is Christ speaking. He says, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, meaning from Genesis, made them male and female? So guess what? Even from the time of creation, there was always the male and the female so that we can fulfill the law that says what? All this? Give me Genesis 1. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, read verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Go ahead. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Mm. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You see that? So the most High God commanded the man and the woman that he created on earth, starting with our foremother Adam, our forefather Adam and our foremother Eve. Listen, you must what? Be fruitful and multiply. You know what? Have sex and be fruitful so that you can multiply. So what you think today with the LGBT, the alphabet community, they are saying, no, gender is, is, gender is a social contract. They're just talking crazy. They wouldn't be here if mother and father did not lay down. Guess what? They took a faith because saying I'm gay, I'm a lesbian, that's just a faith. That's a faith called fornication. That's a, a, a faith of fornication. They are going through phases. You understand? So now a faith has turned into a gender. You can't make this up. A faith has turned into a gender. You understand? Now go back. Matthew 19, read verse 4 again. 
Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Great. And he answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Made them male and female. So what did is, what is Christ do? Christ is quoting Adam. Christ is quoting Adam because the things that were written at four times were written for our land. You understand? Because the spirit of Christ was in Adam. Understand that thing. Get that, hold that. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 7. Okay, Psalms 40, verse 7. I'm going to show you something this day. Psalms 40, verse 7. The spirit of Christ was in Adam. Understand that. Okay. Read that. The spirit of prophecy. Read that. Psalms, chapter 40, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. That is right there. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Why is he going over this? He's letting us know from the beginning of creation, from Genesis up to Revelation, it's all written of Christ. You understand? And Adam was prophesying how many is going to be. You understand? Men and women, men being the head, women being submissive to the man, and they too shall be one flesh. Meaning what? The woman will be, her mind will be after her husband or her Lord's mind. You understand? That's why it says, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Watch this. Give me that in Revelation 19. Okay? Because our forefather Adam was prophesying. That's why my Christ is quoting Adam. Okay? Because the spirit of Christ was in who? Adam. Read that. Revelation 19 verse 10. Come on. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Read. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. See thou do it not. Read. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Read. Worship God. Mm -hmm. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see that thing? For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Because Adam was prophesying. Why? Because the spirit of Christ was in Adam. Give me that in first, uh, first Peter 1. Okay. The spirit of Christ was in Adam. That's why he was able to prophesy how marriage is going to look like. And that's how marriage was. Because our family, our nation began with marriage. Okay. Read that. First Peter. Chapter 1, verse 10. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Read. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, mm -hmm. who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. The grace that should come unto us, that's the, our Lord and Savior, the Christ. You understand? The salvation is that of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. What? The scripture. Okay. Go ahead. Searching what? Or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify? Yeah, hold on. The what, what? The what now? Searching what? Or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify? So the spirit of Christ was in all the prophets. The spirit of Christ was in all the prophets from the time of Adam. The spirit of Christ was in Adam from the beginning of creation. Now, go back to Matthew 19. Read verse 5 again. Matthew 19, verse 5, okay? Because what, what, our, what, what Christ is quoting here, he's quoting Adam. Because Adam was a prophet. He prophesied. He had the spirit of Christ in him. Read what you got. So, uh, Matthew 19, verse 5. Come on. Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. Read. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Mm -hmm. And they twain shall be one flesh. You see that? It is for this, the man shall leave his father and his mother. For a man to leave his father and his mother, that means this man has a job. This man has a place to stay. This man, he set up money aside to marry, to go to the uncles, to say, I want your daughter. I want to take your daughter in marriage. The father will now then give permission to say either yes or no. You understand? So that's why it says to cleave to his wife. No, no girlfriend. Go ahead. Wherefore? They are no more twain, but one flesh. They are no more two. Twain means two. They are no more two people, but one flesh. Because those two personalities must come together to become one flesh. Go ahead. What therefore God had joined together, let not man put asunder. We're going to deal with that last that verse right there. That's a loaded verse right there. We're going to deal with that later on. Watch this. Give me Hebrews 13 verse 4. Watch this thing. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. We need to understand the importance of marriage. What marriage is, 
what, what, what is the meaning behind marriage? Yes, we know marriage is honorable which we are about to leave. But I want to show you something this day. Read that. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Come on. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Read. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable. Come on. In all things. Everything that has to do with marriage, the Lord says is honorable according to the law. Read. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Stop right there. And the bed undefiled. Married couples, when they deal with each other sexually, their bed is undefiled. But when boyfriend and girlfriend, they are bumping and grinding, their bed is defiled. It's a cesspool of diseases, sexually transmitted disease, HIV, gonorrhea, abortion. So you can name the list goes on and on because their bed is defiled. The Lord is not with them. Read again, verse 4. Come on. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Read. Marriage is honorable in all, mm -hmm. and the bed undefiled. Come on. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And a, and a whoremonger is a man that sits around. He's not married. That's a whoremonger. Adulterers are those that are breaking the laws of marriage. He says, God will judge. Now watch this. Why is marriage honorable? Like as we read in here, watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians 5, verse 31. Ephesians 5. It says, marriage is honorable. Why? Why is marriage honorable? Read that. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. Read. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. Mm -hmm. And they too shall be one flesh. So now this is the same thing that uh, that Christ said, because that's the same thing that Adam said. The apostle Paul is following after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior and the prophets that came before him. All that. Give me First Corinthians eleven verse one, just to prove that point. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter eleven verse one. Read. Right. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. You see that? It says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Because the apostle Paul, he followed Christ, just like we do in this day. Okay, because the spirit of Christ was in him. Okay, go back to Ephesians now. Chapter 5, verse 31 again. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. Read. Right? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, mm -hmm. and shall be joined unto his wife, and right. they too shall be one flesh. And they too shall be one flesh. Because why? This man understands the laws of God, what it means to be a man. What it means to, what it takes to be a man. What does the Lord require for him to be called a man in the first place? Now, read on. Come on. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. So the Apostle Paul is revealing to us that marriage is a great mystery. It's not a small mystery. Marriage is a great mystery. He says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. The reason why marriage is honorable is because the marriage represents Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. So your marriage, you, you as the man, you represent Christ in the house. You the Lord of the house. Your wife represents the disciples, the church in your house because your, the church begins in your house. So that's a great honor. You understand? That is a great honor. Understand that thing, you, you men and women. Understand, marriage is a great honor because you representing Christ and the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's not a small job. You understand? That's a heavy job. Understand that. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Acts. Okay, give me Acts chapter 13. You know what? Before you get that, before you get me that, right? Give me Acts 7 verse 38. Let's deal with the church first. Acts 7 38. Okay. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. Really? This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel, which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Read that again. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. Really? This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel, which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So it says, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Who was in the church in the wilderness? That's Moses. Moses was with the 12 tribes of Israel in 
the wilderness. Get that in Deuteronomy 1 and 1 real quick. Deuteronomy 1, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness. You see that? So the church of that the church that was in the wilderness with Moses is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. I'm going to deal with that a little in a couple of something. Go back to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32 again. Ephesians 5, verse 32. Read that again. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32. Go ahead. This is a great mystery, mm -hmm. but I speak concerning Christ and the church. It says, marriage is a great mystery, but it says, I speak concerning Christ and the church. We know who the church is. The church is the 12 tribes of Israel, the congregation of the Lord. Okay, give me that in Chronicles real quick. Mm. First Chronicles, give me that. First Chronicles 28, verse 8. Read that. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 8. Read. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord. You see that? In the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord. So Israel is the congregation of the Lord. Now, go back to Ephesians 5. Let's say two, one more again. Okay. We understand who the church is. Okay. The church, the 12 tribes of Israel, the congregation of the Lord, the general assembly. Okay. Read. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32. Mm -hmm. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. But I speak concerning Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel, the congregation of the Lord. So Christ, guess what? Christ is our Lord and Savior. You understand? So marriage is a mystery between Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me that in Acts chapter 18, verse 23. Acts chapter 18, verse 23. Watch this. Read that. Acts chapter 13, verse 23. Read. Of this man's seed has God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. Raised unto Israel a what? Raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. He raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus the Christ. So Christ is our Lord and Savior. Okay? Watch this now. Ephesians now. Ephesians 5, verse 23. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. Go ahead. For the husband is the head of the wife, mm -hmm. even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. You see that? So the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So guess what? Christ, you as the, the man, we represent Christ in the house, in the household, okay? Because we the head. Right? Even as what? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. Come on. For the husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. Christ is the head of the church. Right. And is the savior of the body. So Christ is the savior, is the savior of the body. Who's the body? The church. The church in verse 23 is the body, which means what? That goes into nation. So Christ is the savior of the nation, the body, the church. So the husband being the head of the wife, guess what he is? Hmm, go ahead. Come on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see that? It says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, the church is the body, which is the what? The 12 tribes of Israel. And we are subject unto Christ. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see that thing? So just as the church is subject to Christ, the wives must be subject to their own husbands in everything because the husbands, they are subject to Christ in everything. We report up, you report to us. You understand? That's, what, that's how it goes. That's the order. That's God's divine order. Our report, uh, our our. Our reporting or our feedback always goes up the chain. You understand? You report to us. We report to the Lord. You understand? Read that verse 24 again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Come on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. 
the wives must be, must be submissive or subject to their own husbands in everything. The proof of that is verse 22. Jump up to verse 22. Come on. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Come on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You see that? It says, wives, you must submit yourselves unto your own husband. Meaning, wives, be subject, be subject unto your own husband as unto the Lord, as the church is subject unto Christ. So, meaning what? The wife, you must teach your husband because he's the Lord of the house. So guess what? Your husband goes to work. When he comes back, you must be, you must act as though you are expecting Christ to walk through that door. That's how you must, that's how you reverence your husband. You understand? You must be as though you are expecting Christ to walk through that door. That means your house will not be dear Makar. Your house will be well ordered. Why? Because you know your Lord is coming back, is coming home. You understand? You must have your house well ordered because that's where your duty comes from, in the ordering of your house. You see that thing? Because you look at your husband, you are looking, you are looking at the Lord, our Lord and Savior. You understand? And I'm going to show you some examples in there. Watch this. Now, jump back, jump back down to verse 24. Read that again, verse 24. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Read. Right. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So let the wives be to be subject or submissive to their own husbands in everything. Because the church of the 12 tribes of Israel, we belong to Christ. Guess what? The wife belongs to her husband. It's that simple. I'm going to prove that. Give me the book of Hebrews 12, verse 23. Hebrews 12, verse 23, because some sisters, they want to be married, but they want to be independent. They want to be independently married. No, I want to have my voice. Lena, I want to have a voice in this marriage. Me, 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 me. Listen, sister, you don't want to be married. I also want to have a say. You don't want to be married. You understand? Read that. Hebrews 12, verse 23. Come on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. Read. To the general assembly and church mm -hmm. of the firstborn. Read that again. To the what? To the general assembly. To the general assembly. Who's the general assembly? Watch this. Go ahead. And church of the firstborn. You see who's the general assembly? The church of the firstborn. Who's the church? The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Who's the firstborn? Christ, the black Messiah. Give me that in Colossians. We're coming back. Okay. Because we belong to our Lord and Savior. We belong to the Messiah. The, the women, they belong to us. That's why when sisters are not married, guess who they belong to? They belong to their father. You still belong to your father until you get married. Your father will give your hand in marriage to a man. Okay, watch this. Give me Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Start at verse 15. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible God? Ray. The firstborn of every creature. The firstborn of every creature. That's talking about Christ, the Messiah. He said, he's the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature, because Christ was the Alpha. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Go ahead. For by him were all things created, mm -hmm. heaven and that are in earth, Red. visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. You see that? So all things were created all things were created by him and for him. Because when the Lord was creating, when, when Christ was creating, he was creating at the command of the Most High God. He said, we saw it and it, it was good. The Lord was pleased with our Lord and Savior. So he's the firstborn. Go ahead. And he is before all things, and mm -hmm. by him all things consist. Meaning by him, when he says by him all things consist, meaning by him all things were formed. He is before all things. Okay, he's the firstborn of every creature of God. Read. And he is the head of the body. Stop the right church. there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's the what? And he is the head of the body. He's the head of the body. The body. The body. The body. That's the general assembly. Okay, go ahead. The church. The church. The 12 tribes of Islam. 
the nation. Go ahead. Who is the beginning, mm -hmm. the firstborn from the dead. Go ahead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. In all things he might have the preeminence because what? He was the firstborn of every creature. Go ahead. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. You see that? He pleased the most like God. He built a reputation with the Father. Okay. So he is the, he, he was, he is the firstborn of all creation. Okay. And he's the head of the body, the church, the general assembly. The 12 tribes of Israel. So the 12 tribes of Israel, we belong to Christ. You understand? Because why? Marriage, that the marriages that we have, they represent Christ and the general assembly, the church, the body, you understand? Which is the 12 tribes of Israel. Now go back. Go back to Hebrews 12, verse 23 again. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. Come on. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, the church of the firstborn, right? Which are written in heaven hmm. and to God, the judge of all. Come on. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. The spirits of just men, the spirit of lawful men that have been made perfect. That's talking about men and women coming into this truth. You understand? So go back to Ephesians now. Go back to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 verse 24 again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Right. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So as the church, the general assembly, the body, is subject to Christ because we are his subject. Okay? So let the wives be to their own husbands. Meaning what? Likewise, the wives must submit themselves to their own husbands in everything. That says the Lord. That's the order. That's the order that the Lord has set up. So, sisters, when you say you want to you have a voice and all that, that means you say you want to have an opinion. You know what that also translates into? I also wear hands in the house. That's why you are combative. Your husband says one thing, you say something else. Your husband says one thing, you say something different. Or they say something to you, you say, I'm going to do it, but you don't do it. Guess what? Because why? When your husband speaks to you, you also you activate. You're going to man mode. Okay? You have your penis up as a woman. You can't make this stuff up. Now, watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something about the church because when it comes to the, the church must be well ordered. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Proverbs. Give me, you know what? Give me Isaiah 9, verse 6. Isaiah. The church must be well ordered just as the house must be well ordered by the Lord of the house, which is who? The husband. You understand? The church must be well ordered according to who? the leaders that the Lord set up to set the church in order. Read that. Isaiah 9 verse 6. Come on. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Come on. For unto us a child is born. Mm -hmm. Unto us a son is given. Read. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And the what? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The general assembly, the body, the church shall be upon his shoulder. That's what the, that's the government, right? And his name shall be called Wonderful, mm -hmm. Counselor, Come on. Mighty God, right. the Everlasting Father, mm. the Prince of Peace. Shiloh, the Prince of Peace. So Christ, the government, you understand, that will be upon his shoulder is the general assembly. The nation, the body, the church, the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch what, what must, how must this government be? How must be this government be set up? Read. Of the increase of his government mm -hmm. and peace, there shall be no end. The increase of his government, that's when the children of Israel are coming back into this truth to learn, men and women. That, that's why it says the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He's going to rule forever. The king of kings, lord of lords. Read. Upon the throne of David mm -hmm. and upon his kingdom. Read. To order it to and to what? establish it. To order it. To order it. To order it. To order it. The it is what? The government, the church, the general assembly. Christ is going to order it. That's what he's doing right now. He's ordering the church. So the church also, the church must be well ordered. 
just as the house must be well ordered, meaning the Lord of the house must order his house according to the laws of God. That means the wife must be in order, the children must be in order, the head of the house must be in order in everything when it comes to that day of the Lord. Read that thing again, verse 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. Come on. Of the increase of his, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and mm -hmm. to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Great. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now watch this. You see this part right here when it says um, to, start to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice. I'm going to show you something here. Hold it. Give me Genesis 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Watch this. The things that were written aforetime time were written for our name. Watch this. Read that. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Read. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Mm -hmm. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations that will be blessed in Abraham is not everybody on the planet Earth. You understand? Read that again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Read. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, mm -hmm. and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in Abraham. Which nation of the earth will be blessed in Abraham? Give me the book of Acts, chapter 3. All the nations of the earth that will be blessed in our forefather Abraham. Acts chapter 3, read verse, read verse 25. Read that. Acts chapter 3, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Ye are the children of the prophets. We are the children of the prophets. Come on. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham. And, and unto Abraham. Saying unto Abraham. Saying unto Abraham. Come on. And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. You see that? And in thy seed, Abraham, shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. In thy seed, Abraham, shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Read the next verse. Watch this. Come on. And to you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, mm -hmm. sent him to bless you. Come on. In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. You see that the promise that was made to Abraham was talking about Christ. The promise that was made to our forefather Abraham was going into Christ. Christ was that promise that was promised to Abraham that this day see that the Lord and Savior will come out of the lineage of Abraham, out of the seed of Abraham, and he will be a savior of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is the seed of our forefather Abraham. Get that in Isaiah 41 verse 8. Read that thing for me. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8. Read. But thou, Israel, art my servant, mm -hmm. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So Israel, guess what? We are the seed of Abraham that was given the promise to Abraham. What's that? Who's that promise? Our Lord and Savior. He's that promise that was promised to Abraham for our sake. Now let's go back. Genesis 18. Verse 18 again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. I'm going to show you something this day. Go ahead. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, great. and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. The nation that will be blessed in Abraham is the 12 tribes of Israel. Who's that blessing in what? Christ, our Lord and Savior. Come on. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. Stop right there. He says he knows Abraham will command his children. He will command his house after him. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And they shall keep the way of the Lord mm -hmm. to do justice and judgment. Stop right there. To do what? To do justice and judgment. To do justice and judgment. So our forefather Abraham, what did he do? Go back to Isaiah 9. Verse 7. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. Go ahead. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Mm -hmm. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. To do what? To order it. To order it, number one, come on. 
and to establish it with to judgment. Establish, to establish the kingdom. Go ahead. To establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. You see that to establish, to order it. How did he order it? He ordered it with what? With judgment and with justice. And that's what our forefather Abraham did. He ordered his house. He established his house. You understand? How? By using judgment and justice, which is what? The laws of God. So the church, the general assembly, must be well ordered according to what? Justice and judgment. Give me that in wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. We are not going to be unordered. We are not going to be disordered. We will not get the kingdom when we are out of order. That will not happen. We must set our houses in order. Our spiritual house and our physical house. You understand? That's how the Lord wants it and that's what the Lord will get. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter, chapter 9 verse 1. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 1. Mm -hmm. God of my fathers and Lord of mercy who has made all things with thy word. Read right? And ordained man through thy wisdom. So our forefather Abraham was ordained through God's wisdom. He was set up to be the leader of his house. You understand? To, to, be, to be an alpha male in his house, to order it and to, to order his household with justice and judgment. And everybody was in agreement with that order. They jumped on his program. That's what we read in here. And that can only take place through the wisdom of the Most High God. Read verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 2. Read. And ordain man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. So he ordained man through his wisdom, right? Watch this. Go ahead. To do what? And order the world according to equity and righteousness. You see that? And order the world according to equity and righteousness. The world that you must order is, the, is your house first. Okay, go ahead. And execute judgment with an upright heart. You see that? With the laws of God. That's the same thing our forefather Abraham did. That's what King Solomon is telling us here. That's what he had to do also. Because his father showed him how to do it. In First Kings 2 verse 1 down. When David was about to die. And he told his son Solomon how to be a man. The same way that Marathias was about to die. He told his son how to do what? How to stand up for this Bible. Understand that thing. Go back to Isaiah 9, verse 7 again. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. Read. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Mm -hmm. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Read. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this day. Okay, watch this. Give me now, because remember, the Lord, he wants the church to be well ordered, and everything will be done decently and in order. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. The church must be well ordered. We are not going to be a bunch of Negroes out here when everybody wants to do whatever the hell they want. Okay? Read that. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Read. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. So the church must be well ordered. That's why it says to order it and to establish it with justice and judgment. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 8 verse 4. Because the Most High God, he calls the man first. There must, there's an order to the church of the Most High God. He calls the man first. I'm going into this. I'm still going into marriage. Don't get it twisted. I'm going over the order of marriage. Watch this. Proverbs 8 verse 4, because I know some of you forgot. Read it. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 4. Come on. And to you, O man, I call. Mm -hmm. And my voice is to the sons of men. You see what the Lord does? The Lord calls the men first. You understand? He calls the men first. So the church, the congregation must be well ordered. The men are the leaders in God's arm. God's movement, the men are in the front. The women will support the men. The women will teach the, the children to support the truth. Watch this. Give me that in Numbers 27, verse 16. Okay. The congregation must be well ordered. Watch this. Read it. Numbers chapter 27, verse 16. 
Pray. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. You see that? Let the Lord, the, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. So a man is the one that is set up over the congregation, not no woman. Women are not set up as leaders in the congregation. That's not biblical. That's of the devil. That's what Christianity pushes. That's what Islam pushes. That's what all these demonic religions are pushing out here. Not what the Bible says. Read again, verse 16. Numbers chapter 27, verse 16. Read. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. Come on. Which may go out before them. Mm -hmm. And which may go in before them. Right. And which may lead them out. You see that? That's going into what? War. You understand? You will go out before them when you're going to war. And may go in before them when they come back from war. Which, and which may lead them out. You understand? This goes into war. Women are not going to be in the front. Right. And which may bring them in. Mm -hmm. That the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep which have no shepherd. You see that thing? Because when women is in the front, the congregation is like a what? It's like a, it's like a sheep would have no shepherd. So that lets you know that the single parent household where women are in the front, the man is not in the house, that house is out of order because why? It's like a sheep that has no shepherd. The women that are raising kids on their own, they, because they keep the black men at the house, because guess what? They drove the men out with their big black mouth. Guess what? That house is like a sheep with no shepherd. That's why the women that are raising children on their own, they want children to be their friends. A parent now is friends with their kids. Why? Because that house is like a sheep with no shepherd. That's why men, a man is a necessity in every nation. You understand? But in the mind of the black woman, the man is not a necessity. He's a, he's a convenience. But when you look at the other nations, it's not like the other nations, they understand that men are the leaders and they support the men in the leadership position. The black woman does not. She wants to be in the front. She wonders why nobody married her. She wonders why she has a bunch of kids. But guess what? She's by herself. When she goes out, you don't see a man around. It's just her and a bunch of kids. When black women go out, it's just them and a bunch of kids. There's no husband. Sheep without shepherd. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 33 verse 18. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 18. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 18. Read. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. You see that? It says, Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken with your ears. Meaning, your spiritual ears must be open. You understand? Hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. You see what the rulers of the congregation are? The men. You understand? So the government of that tribe is raising up now, ordering the men are in the front. It, is, it must be well ordered according to what? God's laws. Okay? Now, let's go back to Ephesians now. Go back to Ephesians chapter 5. Read verse 24 again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 24. Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see that the church is talking about all Islam. We are subject to Christ. But the church is also is ordered. Who's in the front? The man is in the front. That's how it is well ordered. And the women submit to the man. You understand? And the children follow. Likewise, in the house, the black man is the head of the house. There's no 50-50. Men and women are not equal. Men and women are not equal. The black man is made in the image of God. The black woman is made in the image of man. We are not equal. We are not on the same level. You understand? Read again, verse 24. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see that thing? Let the wives be to their own husbands in everything when it comes to the laws of the Most High God. Now, I'm going to show you something this day. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay? 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, let, their, let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Right? Hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Watch this. He says, the wives must be subject to their own husband in everything, just as the man is subject unto Christ. Watch this. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Right. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Mm -hmm. And the head of the woman is the man. Right. And the head of Christ is God. And that's what we read in Ephesians. The Apostle Paul is repeating the same thing uh, to the church of Corinth. He says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. You understand? And the head of the woman is the man. So the black woman, her head is the black man. You understand? And the head of Christ is God. This divine honor right here, this is the reason why you see so many of our sisters, they despise the Bible, especially the letters of Paul. Why? Because Paul is constantly checking the women. Why? Because what was going on in the church was that women thought they were equal or above the men. That's why the Apostle Paul had to address this madness that was taking place in the church. You understand? Jump down to verse 7 now. Come on. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Mm -hmm. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Right. But the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. The woman was made in the image of man. The black man was made in the image of God. That's how this was set up from the beginning. You understand? So the apostle Paul keeps repeating the history of Adam and Eve. You understand? Of the marriage they had. Okay, go ahead. Verse 8, read. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. You see, the man is not of the woman. The man does not come from the woman. But the woman comes from the man. That's why she's called woman. Like we read in Genesis 2 verse 23. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. Mm -hmm. But the woman for the man. That's why we are not equal. The man was not created for the woman. But the woman was created for the man. That's why it says she is the glory of the man. She comes out of the man and she was created to what? To glorify the man. We were created to glorify Christ. Christ was created to glorify the most High like God. That's the order. You understand? That is the order right there. I know sisters are preaching right now like robots. Read the verse again. Read 8 and 9 together. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 8. Read. For the man is not of the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman of the man. But the woman of the man, come on. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. You see that? And this is very pertinent to understand because guess what? Some of you brothers, you try, you are afraid to correct your wife. You know she's going to pop off. She's going to be, you know, she's going she's gonna, to she's gonna transform into a man in seconds. You understand? Because now she thinks she's on your level. Guess what? The most that God is telling you right here says, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman was created for the man. She is the glory of the man. The man, you understand, she's the glory of the man. She was created to glorify the man. I'll give you an example because it's written in the book. Give me that in First Ezra 5. First Ezra 4, I think. First Ezra 4, verse 17. It's been a while. Let me look at it. Not in my notes. So, yeah, First Ezra 4, verse 17. Read that. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. These also make garments for men. Come on. These bring glory unto men. You see that? These, meaning the women, they bring glory unto men. They bring glory unto men. Go back. 1 Corinthians 11. Okay, verse 7 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Read. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Mm -hmm. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Read. But the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. These bring glory unto men. The woman was created to glorify the black man. The black man was created to glorify God. And he was made in the image of the most High God. Not the woman. Watch this. Now, I'm going to give an example regarding this right here. Because the black woman, our sisters need, you sisters need to understand that 
you were not created so that the man was not created to serve you. No, the, you were created to serve the man, to submit to this man as he keeps God's commandments to fight for his nation. Understand that? Now, watch this. The reason why you see today we've got broken families, we've got single parent households, we've got boss bees, we've got boss chicks and all that is because they hate God's divine order. That's why. So they, their sisters, they are taught in the world that because you've got more money than the black man, it means you can tell the black man what to do. It means now you are above the black man. Wrong. Wrong. How wrong you are. That's not biblical. It's not about the money. It's about roles. It's about hierarchy, roles, and responsibility. From the beginning, from the get-go, from the jump, it's always been about hierarchy, roles, and responsibility. Because our family began with marriage. Marriage is not a partnership. Marriage is an institution of hierarchy, roles, and responsibility. Write this down. Watch this. Now give me the book of Ephesians 5, verse 33. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Watch this. Because what we need to understand is that the, within the roles, the, hier the hierarchy, the roles of the responsibility, we need to understand how this works. And sisters, you must humble down and submit to this thing. If you say you love the Lord as he claims you do. Now, Ephesians 5, verse 33. Read that. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Go ahead. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. Because that goes into the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go ahead. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. You see that part right there? And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Remember, marriage is a great mystery. It represents Christ and the church. We will submit to Christ our job. Our order is to submit to Christ in everything. That whatever Christ says, we follow. Guess what? The, the wife, whatever the husband says, she must submit and follow and have joy doing it. But sisters do not have joy doing it. They don't have joy to submit. They don't have joy when it comes to the, the roles and responsibilities that they were given. The order that they were given, they don't want that. They are not satisfied with it. They are greedy. They are covetous for position of the man. You understand? Watch this. Let's get the definition of the word reverence. Okay. I really I want to get the definition of that thing. Reverence. What is the definition of reverence? Let me share my screen real quick so you can see. Okay. You see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Read the definition of reverence right there. <laughs> The definition of reverence. Come on. Now, mm -hmm. deep respect for someone or something. You see that? Deep respect for someone or something. So read that again, Ephesians 5, verse 33. Watch this. Come on. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Read. And the wife sees that she reverence her husband. And the wife sees that she was she has deep respect for her husband. Deep respect for her husband. That's very important. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 7, verse 29. We can be back here. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Here's the commandment. Okay. Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Read. Fear the Lord with all thy soul mm -hmm. and reverence his priests. You see that? And reverence says, fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priests. Meaning what? Show deep respect for his priests. You understand? A lot of sisters, they don't want to do that. I see it when we go for feet. They don't show that deep respect. They don't show that reverence. Why? Because brothers, let me tell you a secret. They still see you as niggas with Bibles. That's how the sisters, they look at us. Niggas with Bibles. I'm going to tell you straight. You understand? But at the job, they submit 100% to the white man. They don't argue. They don't say nothing. They know how to say yes, sir, and they just do it. No lip, no nothing. No attitude, no rolling of the eyes. They just get it done. You see that? Read again verse 29. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. 
Pray. Fear the Lord with all thy soul mm. and reverence his priest. And reverence his priest. He show deep respect for his priest. Okay. Um, read that. Read that thing right there. The synonym. Synonym. Admiration. You know what? Stop right there. Read the verb. Read the verb. The verb of reverence. Mm -hmm. Regard or treat with deep respect. You see that? It says regard or treat. He's the priest of the Lord, the sons of God with deep respect. You understand? It says regard or treat with deep respect. That's some heavy stuff, right? That's kryptonite to the black woman. I'm going to tell you straight up. It's kryptonite to our sisters. Because why? They've been taught that they are equal or above their black men. They are taught that they are independent from their black men. Guess what? You say the world teaching you that you are independent. They, are, they don't want to tell you the truth. The independent black woman is code word for the vulnerable black woman because now she has no protection over her. That's what the world is telling you. But they're not going to come out like that and tell you. But we're going to tell you like that. That says the Lord. Okay? Now, read the synonyms. Synonyms. Mm -hmm. Admiration. Mm. Admiration. Read that. Appreciation. Appreciation. That's one thing that our sisters, they struggle to do that. They struggle to show appreciation for what the truth do. You understand? We're not doing it for that. But guess what? That's something that is not common in our nation. Where actually sisters, they show appreciation for what the men do. You show appreciation to your law. They have their life, the, the, he's, putting, he's putting his life in, he's putting his, his life in danger you know, on the line for people he doesn't know because for the love of his nation. You understand? But when he gets home, he gets rolling of the eye, you understand? Attitude, you understand? Back talk, back chat. You understand? All of that. Actually, a bundle of attitude when he gets home. That's, that's demonic. You understand? That's some evil stuff. Watch this. Um, read that. Recognition. Recognition. Mm. Recognize that this man is a son of God and show deep respect for him. And guess what? He's not just talking about your husband. He's talking about the men in the congregation. Show deep respect for those men. They put their lives on the line. Understand that. Read that. Worship. Mm, worship. Because you might be thinking, worship, why is he saying, why is the synonym worship? Let's get the book of Psalms real quick. Because in the book of Psalms, it does talk about that. Okay. Watch this. I think it's in Psalms 45. Not in my notes. Let me look at it. Yes. Give me Psalms 45. Read verse 10. Psalms 45 verse 10. Watch this thing right here. Come on. Psalms chapter 45, verse 10. Read. Hearken, O daughter, mm -hmm. and consider, and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people mm -hmm. and thy father's house. Because that's when you get married. He says, forget your own people and your father's house. Why is he saying that? Because now you are married now. You belong to this man. I tell your father gave your hand in marriage to this man. Now you belong to this man. You are subject unto him. He says what? Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. Go ahead. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. Mm -hmm. For he is thy Lord. Mm -hmm. And worship thou him. Do what now? And worship thou him. You see that? It says, so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. Who is the king? He's talking about the black man in the house. He is the king. You understand? That's why, sisters, you must treat your men. You must treat your husband like he's a king because he is one. Treat him like a king. Men want to be treated like king. What are you talking about? Look at the other nations. Look at the women of the other nations, how they treat their men like kings. You understand? So the most like God is saying, so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Lord and worship thou him. Meaning what? Go back to Ephesians 5.33. What, what does it mean? Worship thou him. Ephesians 5, verse 33. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Go ahead. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as, as himself. Really? And the wife see that she reverence her husband. And the wife see that she, she must 
see to it that she reverence her husband. Show deep respect for this man because he is your Lord. Understand that thing. Now, watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something, right? Because we now, I'm going to delve deep into specifics. Now, I'm going to deal with the sisters, okay? Because sisters must understand the, the hierarchy that the Lord has set up, the roles and responsibilities that we've been put out so that they know what their role is and what their responsibilities are and what is the hierarchy where they fit in. Watch this. In God's government. You understand? The government begins in your house. Understand that? Watch this. Give me the book, um, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Right. And the head of the woman is the man. Come on. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. This is the order right here. We read it in Ephesians. You understand? This is the order. Now. I want you to write this down, brothers and sisters. Now, the, the, the roles and responsibilities that when it comes to the sisters, pay attention now, okay? This is what the black man is looking for in a sister. And this is the type of, these are the characteristics that you sisters must embody to have a healthy and a happy marriage. Here's what the black man wants. Here's what the black man desires when he's keeping the laws of God, putting his life on the line. Watch this. The first, the first characteristic that the, the sisters must possess is silence. That thing right there, that thing is golden. Silence. That's what the black man wants from the black woman. Number one, silence. Okay, watch this. Give me Titus 2 verse 3. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Good. Now, you know what? Go back to 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. I'm going to show you something here this day. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man, the head of the black man is Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the black woman is the black man. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. This is God's order, right? Watch this. Now, this right here, think of your house, think of a marriage as an organization. It's a government. We read it in... in, in um, in Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7, that he's going to order his government. Likewise, the black man, the head of the house, your job as the black man is to order your house, to order your government. It begins in your house with your wife and your children. It begins with yourself, your wife, and your children. You must order your government aright. Okay? So in this government, guess what? There's a hierarchy. This is the hierarchy that we read in here. Just like in an organization, because this is an organization. So in any organization, there's hierarchy, there's roles and responsibility. Likewise, in the marriage, because remember, marriage is a great mystery between Christ and the church. The church begins with your house with the black man, setting his house in order. Okay? So in this hierarchy, we need to see your role, and you need to see, you need, you, we need to see, you need to understand your role and your responsibility within this hierarchy. We already know what the hierarchy is. The black man is on top. You sub the black man is your head. You submit to him. That's the hierarchy. Marriage is not a partnership. Marriage is not 50-50. Marriage is made up of hierarchy, roles, and responsibility. Understand that. Now, Titus 2 verse 3. Read that. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Mm -hmm. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as become as holiness. You see that? It says, hold on. This is the age women likewise. The, you know what? Hmm. I'm going to show you something. Hold on a second. Because I think I, I need to do this. Yep, I need to do this. So that... Um, hmm. Let me share my screen. Yeah. Now, I want you to look at this. The definition of hierarchy. Read that. The definition of hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Now, a system in which members of an organization or society are ranked according to relative status or authority. You see that? That's hierarchy. 
It says, a system in which members of an organization or society or nation or general assembly or marriage are ranked according to relative status or authority. You understand? Meaning, whenever there's an authority, that means there's one in charge and those they are subject. You, you see that thing? Now read that. Similar. Ranking. Ranking. There must be rank. Hierarchy is rank. There's rank in a marriage. Marriage is not a partnership. It's a rank. Okay. Read. Grading. Grading. Come on. Letter. Letter. Now let's see. Yes. Read that. The upper echelons of a hierarchical system of a hierarchical system is that the upper echelons of a hierarchical system, the upper echelon. That means there's one on top, there's one at the bottom. You understand? There's one that is the in charge, there's one that submits to the one who is in charge. You, you see that thing? Read that. An arrangement or classification of things according to relative importance or inclusiveness. You see that thing? Arrangement or classification. When things are classified, they are classified according to their hierarchy and order of importance. Okay, now read that. The traditional system of orders of angels and other heavenly beings. That's why you've got archangels. You've got the regular angels and you've got archangels. You see that? So even they up there in the heavens is the same thing. Now, let's look at the next definition. Do you see that partnership? Yes, sir. Read the definition of partnership. The definition of partnership. Mm -hmm. Noun. The state of being a partner or partners. The state of being a partner or partner. You understand? Okay. Read that. An association of two or more people as partners. You see that? An association meaning a relationship of two or more people as partners, meaning what? They are equal. Partnership equals equality. Okay. Now, watch this. Read that. League. We are in league. You see that? League. We are on the same league. Okay. We are on the same level. That's partnership because I hear that word being thrown around a lot, especially from black women. No, this is my partner. My partner and I. My partner and I. My pa what are they saying? We are equal. No. Men and women are not equal. There's a hierarchy. There's a classification of what? Of in order of importance. You understand? Let's see. Mm. Yes, read that. What do you mean by partnership? Mm -hmm. A partnership is a form of business where two or more people share ownership. Stop right there. You see that? Where two or more people share ownership. No. It says the church is subject unto Christ. So who owns the church? Christ. Who owns the wife? The husband. Who owns the children? The husband and the wife. You see that? Read again. A partnership is a form of business where two or more people share ownership. They share ownership. That means we share equal responsibilities because we partner. That's what I, I keep hearing that a lot. I keep, especially from our sisters, the Israelite women. They'll be saying, no, this is my partner, my partner, and I, I'm hearing that a lot. You understand? Go ahead. As well as the responsibility for managing the company and the income or losses the business generates. You see that? So this partner, marriage is not this. This is not, marriage is not a partnership. This is what marriage is, a hierarchy. That's what we just read in First Corinthians 11. Okay? Now, I told you. The first characteristic, the first characteristic um, when it comes to roles and responsibility of a woman, this is what the black man wants. Pay attention, black woman. Is silence, silence, okay? Titus 2, read verse 3 now. Titus 2, verse 3. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. The aged women likewise, mm -hmm. that they be in behavior, is become as holiness. Read. Not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, 
So now this is the requirements for the aged women. This is the sisters now. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. These aged women, these are aged women that are married or aged women that have been in the truth for long. And guess what? Who's over the, the leaders of the church? You understand? It says, they're not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. In order for the aged woman to know how to do this, who's supposed to teach this aged woman? The, the aged man. The aged man in the congregation that knows and understands the scriptures, that's the job of the aged man to teach these aged women. So these aged women, where are they getting their order from? The black man. That's the order. And for them to know how to do this, that means what needed to have happened? They needed to be silent when the instructions were given out. Because when you're running your mouth when the instruction is given out, you're not going to hear nothing that is said. When it's time to execute the instruction, you're not going to do it the right way. Why? Because when the instruction was given out, you were thinking about other things or you were thinking, I just want him to finish talking. That's the mind of our sisters today, married or not. Okay? Read verse 4. Watch this. It's going to get more. Go ahead. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Stop right there. For them to teach the young women to be sober, they need to have been taught by their husband to do that. The husband needs to teach the aged woman how to be. So she knows how to behave herself be, uh, uh, before a man. That's why she's able to teach the young women how to be sober because she had to be sober herself, sober minded. Go ahead. To love their husbands. To, right love their children. to love their children. To love their husband. So that means that the aged woman was taught how to be a wife. Just like he was taught by Adam how to be a wife. Likewise, these aged sisters, they will be taught, they'll be, they were taught by their husband how to be good wives. Now in turn, their job is to teach the young women that come after them how to love their husband. Because how's the age sister gonna teach the young sister how to love a husband, but she don't have how is she gonna do that? Go ahead. Read verse, read verse uh, verse four again. Titus chapter two, verse four. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. You see that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Now watch this. Give me first Corinthians 14, verse 33. Because the only for the for the aged woman to know how to teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children, they needed to have learned it from the aged men because they are married to one. So they, they are teaching with experience. Now read that first Corinthians 14, verse 33. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God mm -hmm. is not the author of confusion, but of peace, Please. as in all churches of the saints. You see that? It says the most like God is not the author of confusion. The most like God is about order. You understand? Because con who brings confusion into the name is usually the black woman because she comes with philosophies that she learns from the serpent who she's envious of. Okay? Read. Let your women keep silence in the churches. You see that thing? Let your women do what? Let your women keep silence in the churches. Let your women keep silence in the churches. That's what the black man wants. That's, the, that's characteristic number one. The black man wants silence from the black woman. Because the black woman has been taught to be a boss, Deb and B. Okay? She's been taught to be a boss chick. You understand? But the most High God says the women must keep silence in the churches. Remember, the church begins in what? Where? In the house. So she would have learned to be silent, to be silent from her husband in the house first and foremost. When she comes among the congregation, guess what? She will conduct herself wisely because what she was taught in the house. Before she gets married, she'll know how to what to be silent because her father taught her to do so. You see that thing? That's how this works. Okay, come on. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. It says, you see, it says, it's not permitted for them to speak. 
meaning in the church. What is this talking about? When it says it is not for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the Lord. When it says it is not permitted unto them to speak, what is this talking about? It is not permitted unto them to speak. Is it saying that sisters cannot talk in the, in the congregation? No, it's not talking about that. Okay. So hold that. Give me first Timothy 2. We're going to deal with the with the with the with that that also save the Lord in a minute. But first, I want to deal with this. First Timothy 2. First Timothy 2, read verse 11. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with Wait. all subjection. You see that? Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. You see that? The women must learn in silence. So the black man wants silent black woman. That's what he wants. He wants women to be silent. Silent, that thing is golden. That's when the word says silence is golden. Yes. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection, meaning with all submission, meaning be quiet when instruction is given out to you. Go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor a sub authority over the man, but to be in silence. He says, but I, I suffer not, I allow not a woman to teach. That's what it means in First Corinthians when it says, I, they are not permitted, is not permitted unto them to speak. Meaning what? They are not allowed to teach the men in the congregation. Because that's not the order. You understand? He says, I allow not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Meaning she must not be wanting to be equal or above the black man. You understand? She's not supposed to do that. Like today that the black woman is doing. She wants, she's compassing a man. You understand? She wants to be over the black man. No, we want silence. Okay? Silence is golden. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 34 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Really? Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. You see that they are commanded. They are not asked. They are not suggested. They are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. Give me that in Genesis 3, 16. Let's get the law. Okay. As also says the law. Watch this. Read. Come on. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That goes into childbirth and mental cramp. Read. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Mm -hmm. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You see that thing? And thy desire, meaning the black woman's desire, must be to her husband. Because the reason why the Lord is bringing this out here is because when Eve listened to the serpent, her desire was not to her husband. She wanted to be equal or above Adam. That's why it's written here. That's why it says, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he, your husband, shall rule over thee. You understand? That means you must be subject unto him in everything. That's what he's talking about right there. You understand? That's the law. Your desire, I mean, your desire for learn, your desire for understanding, anything that you need, you must go to your husband. You must be able, whatever you desire, go to your husband for that thing. Because today, that's not what, that's the that's Today, that's not the mindset of the black woman. The mindset of our sisters today, their desires is not to their husband. Their desires is to deal with young men. You understand? Their desires is to twerk on TikTok. Their desires is to be on OnlyFans. Their desires is to be sex workers, which is a which is a covert word to say, I want to be a prostitute. I want to be a legal prostitute. That's what they're saying. Their desire is not to their husband. Their desire is to be a single man, mother, She'd rather be a baby mama than be a husband. Dinawa Ranaga is a classic example. You understand? She'd rather be a baby mom, be a baby mama than be a wife. That's the black woman's desire today, not the husband. Her desire is not the husband. Okay. Now, let's go back. First Corinthians chapter 14. Read verse 34 once more again. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Read. 
let your women keep silence in the churches. Mm -hmm. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. Well, they must be under obedience to their husbands. You understand? Must be under obedience unto your husband, as also says the law, what we read in Genesis 3. Go ahead. And if they will learn anything, mm -hmm. let them ask their husbands at home. You see that? If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. And here's another thing, by the way, on this. Now that we're on this, is that if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Here's the thing. You brothers, when you get married, you're going to find out that some of your wives will not want to listen to you. And you will pull the same scripture in the same Bible that they've got, and they're not going to hear it. Then they come for counseling. When they come for counseling, when leadership brings out the scripture, that's when they believe it. Oh, you're going to see that here. Yeah? All right. You will see that thing if you're not already experiencing it. Read again, verse 35. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35. Go ahead. And if they will learn anything, let them ask mm -hmm. their husbands at home. Read. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Meaning what? In terms of teaching the men. The women can teach, but they can teach other women and the children. That's their order. Okay. So guess what? What we just read in Titus, guess what? The Lord is explaining to us here, saying, listen, for the aged women to know how to teach the young women to love their husband, to love their children, guess what? They must be submissive to their own husband or the leadership if they are not married. But their older sisters in the truth, they are submissive to leadership. Why? Because we fathers unto them. You understand? So that's what we read in here. Go ahead. Verse 36. What? Came the word of God out of from you? Mm -hmm. Or came it unto you only? You see what the Apostle Paul is asking is what? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? He's asking you this. Did the word of God, if he says that the sisters are like 18 years old, the word of God came to them first? No. The word of God was delivered to the men, the head of the nation. The man was responsible to take that word and to teach the congregation. This is faith. Okay. Now, give me the book of Esther. Give me 1 Timothy 3, the 5. 1 Timothy 3, the 5. Women, the first characteristic is silence. Men want silence. Okay. Men want silence. And for you to be able to be well instructed, you need to be silent. So that you can receive the instruction. So that your mind can be well instructed and well ordered. That your, your house will be well ordered. As long as you despise that, guess what? You're not going to have peace in your house. Understand that. First Timothy 3 verse 5. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Wait. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the mm. church of God? You see that? If you don't know how to rule your own house, you will not be able to take care of the church of the most High God, the 12 tribes of Israel. So guess what? The, the apostle Paul is telling us that a man must rule over his own house. That's that word right there. You see that word right there? Sisters hate that that your husband will rule over you. That's what we read in Genesis 3.15. Give me that in uh, Esther 1 verse 22. Esther chapter 1 verse 22. Because guess what? One thing you need to understand. Some sisters, they are the daughters of Vashti, the queen. Some sisters are the daughters of Sam. You, you, you decide, you need to examine yourself. Am I a daughter of Vashti, the queen? Or am I a daughter of Sarah? That's the question. Get that in Esther 1 verse 22. Esther chapter 1, verse 22. Read. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, mm -hmm. into every province according to the writing thereof, and Read. to every people after their language, Read. that every man should bear rule in his own house. That every man should what? That every man should bear rule in his own house. That every man should bear rule in his own house. That's right. Every man should bear rule in, in his own house. That's what we read in Genesis 3.15. That means your job is to rule your house as the man of the most high God. Use God's laws to rule your house. 
and your wife must be what? Silent when these instructions are coming out. Why? Because she believes what is written. You understand? Now, that's it on that. Give me 1 Timothy 2, verse 7 again. Go back there. Let's go back. 1 Timothy 2, verse 11. Watch this. Come on. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Guess what? Men and women are not equal. The reason why you see today black women want to be equal to the black men is because they hate the black men having to rule over them. But they have no problem submitting to the white men at work. They have no problem submitting to the Chinese men at work. But when they get home, their husband says, make me food. Guess what? They say, I'm tired. Why don't you make food? I also have been working. Listen, sister, you wanted to get married. When you hear women say that, they don't want to be married. They don't. They don't want to be married. Okay, go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Really? No, you stop authority over the man, but mm -hmm. to be in silence. You see that? But to be in silence. Sisters, men want silence. They don't want their sister to always running a black mouth. We don't want to hear that. That type of sister, well, guess what? She will exhaust you. Because why? She's always wanting to be equal or above you. She's combative. She's a hyena. Guess what? You're not going to have peace in your house. You understand? Because she's an odious woman. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Mm -hmm. The Adam was created first. That's why he's making his reference here. He says, listen, women must be in silence. They must not usurp authority over the man. Why? Because during this time, the church of Ephesus, they were usurping authority over the man. In the church of Corinth, the same thing that was taking place. Like so it is today. Today where what? The black man is being shut down, is being told to shut up and sit down and sit in some corner somewhere by the black woman. You understand? Them days are over. The black man is waking up in the spirit of Christ. Okay? These are the type of sisters we want. A silent sister. Sisters who knows when to open her mouth. She opens her mouth in wisdom. Okay? Read. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. Mm -hmm. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now that, that thing right there, that thing right there is very important. Okay. It says, and Adam was not deceived. Okay. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So Adam was not tricked. Nobody tricked Adam. Eve did not trick our forefather Adam. Adam was not deceived. The woman was the one that was deceived. Why was she deceived? This is the reason why the black woman was deceived. I'm going to show you that. Give me the book of Sirach. Okay. No, no. Give me Genesis 3, verse 5. Sir. I'm going to show you why the black woman was deceived. Adam was not deceived. Our foremother Eve was deceived. So the same way our foremother was deceived back then is the same way today our, the black woman is deceived by the white man. Watch this. Read Genesis 3, verse 5. This is the beginning. This is the birth of feminism. This is the birth of the feminist movement. Read. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, mm -hmm. and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that? So now the serpent is telling Eve, so listen, if the, the, meaning what? Whatever God said, whatever Adam, your husband told you, is a lie. Because God does know that in the day he eats thereof, meaning you learn of this, then your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that part right there? You shall be as gods. So what is the serpent doing here? The spirit, the, 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 the man that came in the spirit of Satan. She enticed our foremother Eve because our foremother Eve already, guess what she had? She envied her husband. She wanted to be equal or above her husband. And the serpent was able to see that. You understand? She didn't like being told what to do by Adam, our forefather. That's why the serpent was able to, uh, to destroy the marriage, to destroy the order 
of Mary that we read in Genesis 2.24, that the two shall be one flesh. You see that? Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 36, verse 24. Because because of envy, you know what? Hmm. Hold that. Give me, give me. Yeah, no, no, give it to me. Give it. Uh, give me that. Deuteronomy 36, 24. Uh, let me just go there. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Go ahead. No, no, no. Let's see. No, no, verse 25. Verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 25. Go ahead. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Stop right there. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. So because Adam was the hedge over his wife, Eve. Adam was the hedge. And how did he hedge Eve's mind? He taught Eve, our foremother, the laws of God. But Eve, our foremother, did not like that at some point. You understand? She began to envy our forefather Adam. And because of that, watch what happens now. He says, where no edge is, the possession gets spoiled. Get Colossians 2 verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Go ahead. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. That's exactly what happened to our foremother Eve. Our foremother Eve was spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit, meaning empty lies. She believed those lies. She was spoiled by the philosophy that came with the serpent. Go ahead. After the tradition of man, mm -hmm. after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You see that? After the tradition of man, meaning man made stuff. After the workings of the wicked world that we live in, and not after Christ. Remember, Adam was a prophet. Adam had the spirit of Christ on him. That's why he prophesied about marriage. Now, the serpent saw that Eve was rebellious against the order that the Lord set up in terms of hierarchy, roles, and responsibility when it comes to marriage. That is not a partnership. It's not 50-50. No. It's about roles, hierarchy, and responsibility. Now, because the serpent saw this thing, here's what, I'll, here's what happened next. Give me Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs. Chapter 3, verse 31, because our foremother Eve, she had envy. Okay, watch this. Read it. Proverbs 3, 31. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Read. Envy thou not the oppressor, mm -hmm. and choose none of his ways. He says, don't envy the oppressor. Who oppressed Adam and Eve with marriage? The serpent. Who oppressed Eve with wicked demonic customs and doctrines? The serpent. The serpent oppressed Eve because Eve had envy, okay, and chose none of his ways. She chose all the ways of the oppressor, of the serpent, the devil. That's what she did. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 2, 23. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. For God created man to be immortal. Mm -hmm. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. You see that thing? Because remember, he created man in his own image. The man is the image and glory of God. That's what this going is. He made man to be mortal, to live forever. Go ahead, watch this. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. through envy of the devil came death into the world. Stop right there. You see that? Through envy of the devil came death into the world. Who envied the devil? Our former the Eve. She envied the devil. She envied the devil. That's the same thing today that the black woman is doing. She bleaches her skin because she envies the devil. She puts on a weave. She blondes her hair. You understand? She hates the black man. Envy of the devil. It happened back then during the time of Genesis. It's happening today. You understand? And the black woman fell for the what? The woman suffrage movement. You understand? When the white woman wanted to be equal with her white man, they said, we also want to wear pants like you. The black woman joined the movement because the black, the white woman said, we don't have enough numbers. Black women, come and join us. They did. And after the white woman got what she wanted, they cut the black woman aside. Now she's alone by herself, vulnerable. And they say, no, don't worry. You're not alone. You're not vulnerable. You are independent. But they're still married to their white men. You cannot make this stuff up. Okay? Read verse 24 again. 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Read. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. You see that? Through envy of the devil. Who envied the devil? Our foremother Eve, and chose all the ways of the oppressor because she wanted to be equal or above our forefather Adam. Watch this. Give me the book. Let me see something. Yes. Read that again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Wait. And they that do hold of his side do find it. Now watch this. Give me that in 25. Through envy of the devil came death into the world. Watch this. 25. Okay, 25. Read verse 24. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Of the what? Of the woman came the beginning of sin. So the beginning of sin came through our foremother Eve because she envied the devil. She envied the knowledge, the philosophy, the rudiments of the world that was not after Christ that came with the serpent. What do you understand? Read. And through her, we all die. You see that? Through her, we all die. Because in Wisdom of Solomon, we read that he made man to be an image of his own immortality. Eve said, no, I don't want that. I'm going to bring death into the world. The reason why today we don't live as long as we're supposed to is because of what our foremother is. That, listen, this is heavy stuff. Some of you brothers, you're sleeping up in here. Oh, don't sleep now. Watch this. Now, give me, give me the book of Ephesians 4, 24. Ephesians 4, verse 24, it says, Where no head is, there the position is spoiled. Watch this. Watch this. Come on. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Read. Neither give place to the devil. Neither, what? Read that again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Go ahead. Neither give place to the devil. Says, Neither, meaning don't give place to the devil. Our foremother, if she gave place to the devil instead of her husband. Remember, it says, thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. She didn't do that. She listened to a new husband, the devil. You see that thing? She listened to a new husband, the devil. That's what happens. Watch this. Why? Because remember, she was supposed to what? She was supposed to be silent and learn everything that her husband taught her. But over time, it, she started to become bitter. Why? Because Adam was a god on earth. She started to envy that. So she decided, you know what? I also need some type of some type of wisdom so that also people can praise me. Me, 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 me. Guess what? Death came into the world because of that. You understand? Because why? She did not want to remain silent and listen and learn from her husband. Okay? Give me Sarah 26 verse 13. Sarah 26 verse 13. The black man wants silence. That's what he wants. Silence. Watch this. Sarah 26 verse 13. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 13. Go ahead. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband. Hmm. And her discretion will fatten his bones. Read it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 13. Come on. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. Mm. And her discretion will fatten his bones. Now, this right here, this is beautiful right here. This is the type of woman we want. This is what the black man is looking for. It says, and her discretion will fatten his bones. I'm going to show you something. Let's get the definition of discretion. Okay, let's get the definition of discretion. Now read that. The definition of discretion. Mm -hmm. Now, the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing confidential information. You see that? So discretion here is talking about what is talking, is going into what? You must have what? Text. You must have timing. You understand? Discretion goes into what? 
you don't have you, you don't you don't run your black mouth. You understand? You're not all up in your husband's face. You don't disrespect him. The disrespect all up in his face, interrupting him when he speak, wanting to speak over him, talk over him. Guess what? You have no discretion. You have no discretion. Argumentative, always finding a, uh, finding a way to fight with your husband. You have no discretion. You will not fatten your husband's bone. Understand that, okay? Now let's see. Um, read that. Similar. Tact. Tact. You must have tact, okay? Read that. Diplomacy. Diplomacy. Mm. Read that. Consideration. Consideration, read. Prudence. Prudence, that goes into wisdom. Go ahead. Judgment. Judgment. Go ahead, read that. Sense. Mm. Sense. Go ahead. Common sense. Common sense. Common sense. So a woman who has no common sense, she has no discretion. She will embarrass you. You understand? No timing whatsoever. Why? Because in the house, she won't listen to you. When she comes around us, guess what? She be making foolish mistakes. She said, hmm, that's what she does in her house. She don't respect this brother. She don't respect this man. She has no discretion. The black man, we want silence. Okay. Now, go back to Sarah. Sarah chapter 26, read verse 14 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 14. Go ahead. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You see that? A silent and loving woman, that's a gift of God right there. She's silent because why? When you teach her, guess what? She remains silent. Why? She's learning with all subjection. She's taking the instruction in so she can what? She can glorify you. And loving. She's silent and she's loving. She's quiet. Why? Because she wants to hear what you have to say. Why? Because she wants to learn. She wants to grow with you. She wants to reverence you. She wants to bring honor unto you. She wants to bring glory unto you. The only way she can do that, she must be silent and loving. He says, that's a gift of God. If the wife is the opposite, she's not silent, she has a loud mouth, she's hateful, she hates instruction, that's not a gift of God. That's a gift of Satan. Understand that. Go ahead. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Meaning that mind is, is, is worth because it's well instructed. Out of the laws of God. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 7, okay? Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse... Read verse 26. No, no, no. Ecclesi verse 19, verse 19, verse 19. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 19. Mm -hmm. For go not a wise and good woman. Come on. For her grace is above gold. You see that? It says, don't let go of a wise and a good woman. Because it says, hey, grace is above gold. Mm. Listen, you cannot put a price on this type of woman, right? This is a virtual sister right here. She's silent. You understand? Her mind is well instructed. She reverences you. She understands that you're the head of the house. And she agrees with that. And she finds joy in that thing. She's not independently married. Okay? Read verse 26. Watch this. Oh, we we'll get this later on. Okay? We'll get this later on. Go back to Sarah 26, verse 14 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 14. Mm -hmm. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Read. There is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. There is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Because she's instructed of the laws of God. She loves God's laws. She loves the hierarchy. She loves the order. She loves the roles and responsibilities that the Lord has set out. And she's completely 100% with that. Go ahead. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace. Hmm. And her continent mind cannot be valued. Her continent mind cannot be valued anymore. Her disciplined mind cannot be valued. You cannot put a price on that. That's why I said, forego not that type of woman. Don't leave that type of woman. Don't let it go. Because her mind is well instructed. Her mind is above gold. Why? Because she reverences you. She's silent when these instructions are given out 
when you set your house in order, she's she's 100% with that. You understand? But if you have this type of woman on the other hand, watch this. This type of woman. You have the gift of stages. This type of woman. Give me Proverbs chapter 32. Proverbs 30 verse 21. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 21. Mm -hmm. For three things the earth is disquieted. It says, for three things the earth is disquieted. Go ahead. And for four which it cannot bear. It says, the fourth one the earth cannot bear. It. I'm going to show you what that is. Now read verse 22. Go ahead. For a servant when he reigneth. It says, for a servant when he reigneth, because we serve it. Okay, it says, for a servant when he reigns. When a servant does rule, go ahead. And a fool when he's filled with meat. You see, and a fool when he's filled with meat. There's no benefit of these. A servant that's ruling, it says, that's no benefit. Because right now, we have servants that are ruling over us. The servants are ruling the kings of the earth. It says, and a fool when he's filled with meat. Go ahead, watch this. For an odious woman, when she is married. Stop right there. It says, for the third thing it says, um, for an odious woman when she is married. What is an odious woman? Read the definition of odious. What is an odious woman? The definition of odious, mm -hmm. adjective, extremely unpleasant, mm -hmm. repulsive. You see that? That's the characteristics of these bald bitches. Excuse my French. The, the, this, this is the characteristics of the, the bald chicks of today. The black women. They say, I don't cook, I don't clean, but I'm going to tell you how I get the, how I got this ring. Why? Because the, the stuff that they are talking about, listen, what? That's what the, that's the black woman's desire. What? Mm. She's what? Read that again, the definition. The definition of odious, mm -hmm. extremely unpleasant, repulsive. Extremely unpleasant, repulsive. Repulsive. Read that. <laughs> revolting. Revolting. An odious woman, she's revolting. Extremely unpleasant, she is revolting. Read that. Repugnant. Mm. Read that. Disgusting. Disgusting. A odious, an odious woman that's married, She's disgusting. No, no man can stand this type of demon. This is a demon. Okay, read that. Vile. She's vile, meaning what? Toxic. Okay, she's got toxic emotions. She will what? She will intoxicate you with those toxic emotions. Read that. Hateful. She's hateful. She hates the laws of God and she hates you. Go ahead. Sickening. She's sickening. Go ahead. Abominable. Abominable. Watch this. Go ahead. Monstrous. That's a man. That's a monster. You are married to a monster. That's a monster right there. Watch this. Mm, read that. Nasty. He's nasty. Okay. Read. Sick making. It makes you sick. Go ahead. Yucky. He's yucky. Mm. Disgustful. Disgustful. Ray. Noisome. Noisome. She's loud. She's loud. So what I'm trying to show you is that the most High God, he put this type of this word in the Bible. So guess what? Or an odious woman, these are all the characteristics of an odious woman. So if the most I had to put this type, this word in the Bible, and now because we've got the interweb, we can get the definition of these words. That means a sister that has all these characteristics, this sister is, must not be married. This sister must not be somebody's wife. Because why? The earth will be disquieted. That's how heavy this is. That's how heavy this is. So black men don't want this type of woman. This type of woman, she will watch, she will dry your bones. She will destroy your spirit, this type of woman. Okay? So we must be watchful of that. Brothers, when you're proving, guess what? Make sure that you don't look, you don't find yourself with this type of woman. Because guess what? You're not gonna have a you're not gonna have joy in your life. Okay, now watch this. 
Um, read that again. Proverbs 30 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 23. Mm -hmm. For an odious woman when she is married and an handmaid that is heir to her mistress. Like Hagar, what she did to her former daughter. Now, what we're reading here is the most the most that God is giving the black men standards of what they're looking for because for too long the black woman has been dictating to the black man what she wants. And now the most has said, No, 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 no. I'm calling the black man first. Then black men will set the standards, and the black woman must meet that standard. It's time that things are set in order. Okay. So, number one, we want a sister that is silent. We, that's what we, we want, silence, okay? The second thing is submission. We want submission. This is the type of women that the black men want. And guess what? Those women are in the Bible. They are not in the world listening to Kari B and Kanibal. No, they are in the Holy Bible, okay? The second thing is submission. We want sisters to be submissive. We want, black men want sisters that are submissive, okay? I'm going to give an example. Give me 1 Peter 3, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Because submission is kryptonite to the black woman. I'm going to say it again. Submission is kryptonite to the black woman. Okay? 1 Peter 3, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. You see that? Be in subjection to your own husbands. Meaning what? Submit yourself to your own husband. Go ahead. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Because you know why? This woman, Moses, give me Proverbs 21. It says, if the husband, let's say, maybe the husband is not in the spirit at that time. It says, the, the, the wife's conversation must win her husband over just by her conversation. I'm going to show you that. All oh, praise. Proverbs 31. Give me Proverbs chapter 31 and verse, verse 26. Proverbs 31, 26. Read that. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. Go ahead. She opened her mouth with wisdom. He opens her mouth with wisdom. Read. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. You see that thing? In her tongue. In her tongue is the law of kindness. This is what the black man is looking for. Because, listen, in order for you to submit, you need to learn how to be silent first. Because while you're silent, guess what you receive? You're receiving instruction. Your mind is, is being instructed by your Lord. The black man, he's the one, he's, been, he's instructing. Then once you're done receiving the instruction, you submit to the instructions that are given you. You see how that works? So silence first, because instructions are given out. Then when it's time to execute, you submit to those instructions. You see that? Then you're going to have peace in your house. Happy Lord, happy wife. Read again verse 26. Come on. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26. Read. She opened her mouth with wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. That's why it says, by what? It says, that they, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wife. Meaning what? Her conversation, she opens her mouth in wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kind. She's kind. She's not a grizzly bear. She's not a hyena. She's not a bulldog. She's not a sumo wrestler. You understand? Watch this. Go back to First Peter 3 verse 2 now. Read verse 2. First Peter chapter 3 verse 2. Mm-hmm. While they behold your, your chaste conversation coupled with fear. You see that? While the men, while your husband beholds, meaning observes your chaste conversation, meaning your conversation that is disciplined. Remember, in order for your conversation to be disciplined, he read it in Sirach. He says, her mind is well instructed. So that's why it says, her chaste conversation coupled with fear. Fear of what? Fear of the Lord. To understand what is required of it according to the role that was given to her that we read in Titus 2. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 36, verse 22. Sirach 36, verse 22. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 22. 
Go ahead. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. You see that? Because guess what? Men love beautiful women. I'm not going to lie to you and say men don't love beautiful women. No, no, men love beautiful women. I'm going to tell you straight. Read again, verse 22. Come on. Ecclesiastes of the 36, verse 22. Read. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. It cheereth the countenance of a man. Go ahead. And a man loveth nothing better. You see that? A man loves nothing better. He says a man loves a beautiful woman. Men love beautiful women. It says the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance of a man, meaning your husband. Your beauty will cheer your husband. He says a man loveth nothing better because your husband does not love anything better. Just by looking at you, he just puts a smile on his face. But if you are an odious woman, guess what? That will not put a, that will not put a smile on your husband's face. That will not take place. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 23. Watch this. If there be kindness. Stop right there. So yes, men love beautiful women if there's kindness in their tongue. Like we read in Proverbs 31, 26. If there's kindness in this woman's tongue, Guess what? Men love it nothing bad because you can be beautiful on the outside and when you open your mouth it's like, oh hell no. Then you just mess everything up when you open your mouth. You see that? Read. Meekness. Meekness, meaning what? Meekness means submission. Read. And comfort. Hmm. In her tongue. In her what? In her tongue. In her tongue, he says, if there be kindness, meekness, comfort in this woman's tongue, go ahead. Then is not her husband like other men. Then you're not like other men. Why? Because her discretion is fattening your bones. You see that? So what we're reading here, that's what the men, that's what the black man is looking for. Okay? Go back to First Peter 3. Read verse 2 again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 2. Read. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Read. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair mm -hmm. and of wearing of gold Read. or of putting on of apparel. So now he's saying, listen, it says your adorning must not be that outward adorning or plating of the hair, of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. What is he saying? He is not saying that women must not put on. The, they must not braid their hair, they must not put earrings and all that. No. He said, don't put emphasis on that only. That must not be what defines you. You must have substance. You understand? You must have class. You must have standards. You must have wisdom. Then, beauty and wisdom. Okay? You must have both. He says, but today our sisters get what they focus on. They only focus on the outward appearance. They put on makeup, too much makeup. They blonde their hair. They put on weaves, dog hair on their head. Guess what? They just overemphasize that. So now they think that's what man is looking for. No, the black man is not looking. The new black man is not looking for that. Because when a sister does that, you can tell she's got a low self-esteem. You understand? Everything about her is about what she looks on the outside. But when she opens her mouth, there's no kindness. There's no meekness. There's no comfort in her tongue, but it's what? It's like an open sepulcher. When she opens her mouth, it's like, oh my God, no. Keep your mouth closed. You understand? Everything is good. You see that? That's what the Lord is talking about. Right? Go ahead, verse 4. Verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Mm -hmm. In that which is not corruptible. Come on. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. You see that thing? It says, it says, but what? He's letting you know how the sisters must carry themselves. It says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. That's what the spirit of Christ is says, in that which is not corruptible. You understand? Because you, the word of God is in you. Give me that in First Peter, okay? First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Read that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Come on. Being born again, mm -hmm. not of corruptible seed. You see that? This sister is born again, not of corruptible seed, which is the philosophies of men. Go ahead. But of incorruptible, mm -hmm. 
by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You see that? So she must be what? She must be born again of incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So when it says, go back to verse Peter now, 3 verse 4 again. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, mm -hmm. in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. You see that thing? So it says, the hidden of the man of the heart that is not corruptible is what? The word of God. Because you understand God's law. That's why you submit to your husband with all subjection, like we read in verse 1. That you can win your husband over just by your conversation. Why? Because in your tongue is the law of kindness, meekness, and comfort. You understand? Now, now I'm going to show you something. Now, you see verse 3 and 4. Read verse 3 and 4 together. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to give you some examples what the apostle Peter was addressing here. Read that. First Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So now what I want to show you something, I'm going to show you something. Here. Now, our foremothers, right? Our foremothers, yes, they, they look beautiful, but they had wisdom also. You understand? They look bad to the bone, but they had wisdom. And they were known for their wisdom and their beauty. It wasn't just one feather, because why? They were well instructed. Their minds were well instructed by their husband. Understand that thing, okay? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. Give me... You know what? Keep reading, keep reading. I'm going to deal with that later on. Uh, first Peter 3. Go back to First Peter 3, read verse 5. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Read. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, mm -hmm. being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see what he's saying? Is that the, well, the old, in the old time, holy women also, they trusted in the Lord, they adorned themselves. Meaning what? Yes, they deck themselves up, but they were in subjection to their own husbands. So they were not just, they dress up and all of that, they look good, but they don't submit to their husband. No, it wasn't like that. Because today, our sisters, they take themselves up, but they say, I don't submit to no man. But they lay down with different men, they put babies by different fathers, by different men, but they say, I don't submit myself to no man. This is, it's, it's, it's delusional, and I'll tell you what I mean by it. A sister will, will, will give her most precious possession, which is what? What's between her legs? To a man. And the man will abuse her sexually, you understand? Meaning abuse, meaning have sex with her and so on and so forth. And go as far as to give that woman a baby. But she does not listen to what he says. You see the confusion in this? This is crazy. She will submit, she will give up her most precious position and give the greatest honor that a woman can give to a man, meaning far, meaning give birth, give, give this man children, but she does not listen to the instruction that he gives her, nor require this man to marry her. But she, and she, she says, I'd rather be a baby mama than a wife. I'm telling you, the, the reason why you see that families are broken, the black woman is what the hell of is because of Feminism, okay? Feminism is what has destroyed the black nation. Understand that thing. Now, read verse 5 again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. I got to test this. I got to test this. Give me Jeremiah 4, verse 6. I need to test this thing. Because what I've noticed, there was a sister, there was a sister with us, okay? And, well, she, she attended, I think she joined the online class now and she dropped off. But, what I'm trying to show, because what I'm seeing is that she's too much into her makeup, always ponting and ponting. Sister, there's things that need to be done in the congregation. Sisters are busy doing this and that. Two minutes, two minutes, she's whipping out a, uh, a mirror. She's ponting her face. That's the mindset of our black sisters today, our sisters today. 
Even that in Jeremiah 4, verse 30, I'm going to show you that. Because it happened in the congregation. You understand? Okay, read it. Jeremiah 4, Jeremiah verse 30. chapter 4, verse 30. Go ahead. And when thou art spoiled, what hmm. wilt thou do? You see that? When you are spoiled, what are you going to do? Because today it says, where no hedge is, the position gets spoiled. When you are spoiled by the philosophies of men, go ahead. Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, crimson, you clothe yourself with crimson, meaning what? She's decking herself down. Go ahead. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, mm -hmm. though thou rentest thy face with painting, meaning makeup, you mean you see that? You put gold earrings on, nose jewels on, and so on and so forth. Okay? You rent your face and with painting, you put makeup on and all that. Right? In vain shall thou make thyself fair. You hear what the Bible is saying? It says, in vain you making yourself beautiful. Why? Because the sister has no substance, no wisdom, no standard. Though she's only putting emphasis on what she looks on the outside. You see that? It says, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. They make themselves beautiful for, for what? He says, it's in vain. Why? Because they are not feminine. They are masculine. So they are trying to mask their masculinity with makeup. So a simple look at that and say, you see, that's a good sister right there. Not realizing that all of that makeup, all that, she's hiding the fact that she's a man. Go ahead. Go ahead. In vain shall thou make thyself fair. Mm -hmm. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. They will seek to sleep with you only, but they will never marry you. He says, thy lovers, because you think they love you. No, they just lust after you. He says, they will despise you. Well, they will sleep with you. They'll get rid of you. They will seek their life. They will, they will get you, they will get you into bed. They will, they will, they will blow your back up and get they'll kick you out, like we read in First Samuel. It says, be, it says, arise and be gone. That's what they will do. They'll sleep with you, they'll give you 20 rand for Uber and say, get the hell out. And that's what's going on with our sisters today. Because why? They put too much emphasis on what they look on the outside, they untrack the young men. That are void of understanding, they will sex you up and leave you the baby. Now you have to go to Santa and Pew. Now you're a baby mama. You say, No, I'm okay with that. Again, another a sister in the congregation, she said, No, falling pregnant is not a problem. Outside of marriage, she said, Yes. So she'd rather be a baby mama than be a wife. That's what we read in here. She puts on makeup, she's always decking herself and making herself up as a ponta, a ponta. But what? She does not want to be a wife, but she's okay being a baby mama. You can't make this stuff up. Okay. So go back. First Peter 3. Okay. First Peter 3, verse 5. Read that again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For after this men in the old time, the holy women also, mm -hmm. who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. They were in subjection to their own husbands. They were submissive to their own husbands. Go ahead. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, mm. calling him Lord. You see that? Our four is giving an example now. The old women of all time. It says, even indeed as Sarah, our foremother, she obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. She gave our forefather reverence. She reverenced our forefather Abraham. She treated him with deep respect. Okay, come on. Whose daughters ye are, mm -hmm. as long as ye do well. Wait. Really? And are not afraid with any amazement. You see that they are all they are the daughters of Sarah if they do well. But if you don't do well, you do, you are not silent. You are a loud mouth black woman. You don't want to submit to your husband. You are not the daughter of Sarah. You are the daughter of Vashti the queen of Persia. You are the daughter of Jezebel, the the wife of Ahab. Understand that you are not the daughter of Sarah. If you cannot be silent. You cannot be submissive. You are not the daughter of Sarah. Let's get some examples. Give me the book of Judith 8 verse 1. Watch this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with two things at once. We deal with beauty. We deal with wisdom in terms of submission. Silent submission. Watch this. Give me Judith 8 verse 1. Judith chapter 8 verse 1. Go ahead. Now at that time, Judith had thereof, which was the daughter of Mirari, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Oziel, the son of Elkia, 
the son of Ananias, the son of Gideon, the son of Raphaim, the son of Akiso, the son of Eliu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Samael, the son of Salasadai, the son of Israel. Go ahead. And Manasseh was a husband hmm. of a tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. So now our foremother Judy, she was married to Manasseh. Manasseh, our forefather, died in the, during the barley harvest. Okay, now watch this. Now, our foremother Judy, she was married. Okay, but I want to show you something. Give me Judy 10, verse 3. Judy 10, verse 3. Because remember, it says, our, the sisters today, they put emphasis on what they look on the outside, but it's all in vain because the people that sleep with them and all, they hate them because that's why they don't marry them, nor take care of the children they give them. Read that. Judith 10, verse 3. But our foremother, Judith, guess what? Hmm. Give me Judith 11, verse 21 first. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to deal it. I'm going to, I'm going to deal with it like this. Judith 11, verse 21. Read that. Judith chapter 11, verse 21. Read. There is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other, mm -hmm. both for beauty of face and wisdom of words. You see that? Let's talk about our former mother, Judy. It says, there is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other, both for beauty of face, meaning she was beautiful, and wisdom of words. Not only was she beautiful, but she was, she was wise. She had substance. She had wisdom. You see that thing? That's what the Apostle Peter was explaining. That's what the Apostle Paul was explaining in 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. Now, watch this. Let's deal with that. This is both for beauty of face. Give me Judy 10 verse 3. Watch this. Judith, chapter 10, verse 3. Go ahead. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on, hmm. and put off the garments of her widowhood, and washed her body all over with water. That means, and this sister, hold on, our sister Judith, she had good hygiene uh, habits. She had good hygiene habits. It says, and washed her body all over with water. Okay, read on. And anointed herself with precious ointment. Meaning what? Oils and all of them, you know, for her skin to smell good. Go ahead. And braided the hair of her head. Mm. And put on a tie upon it. She put on a head wrap. Beautiful head wrap upon her head. Read. And put on her garment of gladness. Mm. Wherewith she was glad during the life of Manasseh's husband. Because she would dress up for her husband. Some of you sisters, you don't want to dress up for your husband. Your husband gets home from work, you're still wearing pajamas. You're not dressed to the bone to impress him when he walks in the door. You know how beautiful that is? You come back from a, you come back from a long day of work. You're tired, you're exhausted. Esau was messing you up. When you knock at the door because you meet your husband at the door, you open the door. Shalom, my Lord. All praises to the Lord. Thank God the Lord delivered you home safe to me. Okay? All praises were praying for you. I'm glad you're home. Oh, praise the Lord. And when you open the door, you smell good, you look gorgeous. Why? Because you want to cheer him up. You want him to look good. You want, you want him to see you say, listen, I did all this for you. But guess what? You get married, you meet your husband at the door, vote A and C, you show low. You can't make this up. You understand? You go to bed, you are wearing Ramaphosa. But why you don't touch me anymore? Just keep us out of my You crazy. You understand? Well, please keep us at Julius Malema. It's a economic freedom in our lifetime. Your husband must be turned on by that. Come on, sister. I know I'm getting off there. I'm going on a tangent. Let me bring myself there. <laughs> give me, give me the book. Give me Judith 8, verse 28. Let's deal with the wisdom that our former Judith had. Okay, Judith 8, verse 28. Read that. Judith, chapter 8, verse 28. Go ahead. Then said Ozias to her, mm -hmm. All that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. Read. And there is none that may gainsay thy words. There is none that may gainsay your words. Why? Because our former the Judith, she had wisdom of words. She was a wise sister because she was well instructed of her husband Manasseh. Go ahead. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning of thy days, 
all the people have known thine understanding because the disposition of thine heart is good. Because the character of your heart is good. So her character was good. You understand? But what we, what we want to notice about this, Judith had a watch. She had a good report from the men. You understand? It says, for this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. So it wasn't the first time. But from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known of thy, known thy understanding. So that means Judith had a good record. She had a good reputation among the men of Israel. You understand? She was not all up in the men's face, okay, because she was well instructed of Manasseh, her husband. So she was beautiful. She decked herself, and not only that, she had reputation in Israel. She was being a, what, a virtuous woman. So this is what the most High God, this is what the Lord is telling sisters. Listen, submission. You, that's why it says they adorn themselves, meaning they deck themselves up, but not only that, they were submissive to their husbands, calling their husbands Lord. So they reverence their husbands. They were submissive to their own husbands. Okay? That's the point I wanted to make. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Numbers, because what's going to happen is that what you want to notice is this. A lot of the times is that sisters that are not submissive is because of this. I'm going to show you why they are not submissive. Okay? Submission is like kryptonite to them. Submission is like, a, is like climbing up a, a same way as an old man. That's what submission is like to the black people. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to show you the reason why you see sisters, they struggle to submit is because of this. Numbers 12, verse 1. Read that. Numbers, chapter 12, verse 1. Read and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Because he married an Ethiopian woman. Go ahead, watch this. And they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Mm. Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. The Lord heard that thing and he was mad. The most I was upset. He was angry. Because Miriam. She was what? She was, she was usurping authority over the man. Which man? Moses, our forefather. She was running him out. Watch this. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. This is the judgment, okay? Because the judgment was leprosy. But what, what, what followed after? Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. If the father had but spit in the face. Stop right there. If the father but had what? If a father had but spit in her face, he says, because remember, they were begging the Lord to what to heal um, uh, uh, Miriam. Read verse 13 so we get it. Numbers chapter 12, verse 13. Come on. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. So Moses was praying unto the Lord for the Lord to heal his, his sister. Okay. But watch this. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face. What does that mean? If her father but he had spit in her face, meaning what? If her father had corrected her, if her father had taught her to be in order and stop running a black mouth, none of this would have happened. A lot of the times when you see sisters, they argue with their husbands is because they were what? They, were, they, did, not, they did not honor their fathers and their mothers. Or they did not have their father in their life. You understand? So they don't know how to deal with men. They don't know how to talk to a man. They don't know how to submit to a man. Because these are the things that her father was supposed to have taught her. her and guess what? She was not going to do this. You serve authority over the man. And that's, that's, the, that's, what, that's the mindset of our sisters today. It is true. You understand? They don't know how to talk to the black man. They speak with the, to the black man with disrespect, with contempt, with reproach. But when they speak with the men of the other nation, they automatically know how to submit. They automatically know how to reverence and to show respect. But they don't do that with us. You understand? Read again, verse 14. Numbers chapter 12, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? You see that? Should she not be ashamed seven days? If her father had corrected her, set her in order and checked her, you understand? 
she was not going to be finding herself in this situation right here. Go ahead. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. Mm. And after that, let her be received in again. You see what the Lord is saying? He said, no, 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 leave her in that cage. Leave her in there by herself so she can examine herself by the evil that she's done running her black mouth. You see that thing? So today the sisters, they don't see anything wrong with that interrupting the black man when he speaks, speaking over him. You understand? Showing, showing the self or whether they have a rock, they have a penis, which is metaphorical. It's a spiritual one. You understand? But what we're reading here, that's what our foremother Miriam did. Okay? So the reason why you see today our sisters, they struggle with that is because their fathers, they, either the father was not in their life, they were raised by only a single parent, or the father was in their life and they disrespected their father. Now, when they get married, they don't know how to deal with this man. When they come into the congregation, they don't know how to talk to men. Then when we show them, this is how you conduct yourself, sister. Learn etiquette, that's the, the law. This is the scriptures, this is the examples of the foremothers, this is the example of the sisters in the congregation that you must follow. They know how to do this already. You must learn from their example. They say, hell to, hell to them, not to hell with them. They don't want that. You see that? So now, Black men don't want that. They don't want a sister that is combative. Because if you disrespect your father, you're not going to disrespect your husband. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. You disrespect your brothers that are older than you in the house, you will not be able to submit to a husband. Watch this. Give me Sarah 22 verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 22 verse 3. Go ahead. An evil nurtured son is a dishonor of his father that beget him. You see that? That's going into the son now. Go ahead. And a foolish daughter is born to his loss. A foolish daughter is born to the father's loss. Because why? She's useless. She's not going to reverence. She's not going to bring a good name into her father's house. She's not going to be able to bring forth children by getting married. So guess what? She's, she, she's a foolish daughter because she don't respect her father. She don't listen to her father. She don't honor her father. She don't know how to talk to her father. You understand? It says, guess what? It says, it's born to his loss. Now, that's a, that, you know, that's a hard pill to swallow. You understand? Go ahead. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. A wise daughter will bring an inheritance to her husband. You understand? Because why? She'll have skills. She'll know the laws of God. She'll already know how to talk to men because she submitted herself under the rule of her father in the house. And she did not have a father in the house in the world. When she gets into the congregation, she submits herself to the leadership. Give me First Peter. No, give me First Timothy 5 and 1, just to show you that. Okay, First Timothy 5, verse 1. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Go ahead. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. But entreat him as a father. So as the leadership, we are fathers. You understand? That's why it says, be a father, be as a father unto the fatherless. In Sarah 4 verse 10. Go ahead. But entreat him as a father, mm -hmm. and the younger men as brethren. You see that? And the young men in this truth as brethren. That's the order. You understand? That way, when you get married, you're not going to be hated by your husband. Okay? Go back to Sarak now. 22. Sarak 22 verse 4 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 22 verse 4. Read. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Mm -hmm. But she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. You see that thing? That's why she's born to his law. Because why? She's only just giving the father strength. She's jumping my fancy, she's sleeping around it, she's disrespectful, committing abortions, having sex, you understand, sex upon sex upon sex. You hear very scandalous things about your daughter. She's playing the whore in the community. You see that thing? She's tracking on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. That's what we're reading here, you understand? It says what? But she that liveth dishonestly, meaning going against the laws of God, is her father's heaviness. Okay, go ahead. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Stop, stop right there. She that is bold dishonors both her father and her husband. 
bold against what? Bold against the laws of God. She's bold towards God's commandment. You give the law, she says, hell no. You give the law, she says, I will do it, but she never does. You give the law, she's stubborn. You give the law, she's argumentative, she's combative. Guess what the Lord is saying? Read again verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 5. Mm -hmm. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Mm -hmm. But they both shall despise her. You see that thing? It says, but they both shall, they shall hate her. The father will hate his daughter. The husband will hate his wife. That's what we're reading here because why? The father is the one that's supposed to prepare his daughter for marriage. So that when she gets married, she'll, he will hear good report of her and the husband will have this woman because why? She comes from a good family. She knows how to submit to her husband. You understand that? So guess what? Submission is a very important thing. From your father's house, you go straight to your husband's house. But your father must have taught you how to submit, how to talk, how to correct, conduct yourself, how to order your house, how to dress, how to sit, how to address the man. You understand? So when she gets married, it's not new. She will understand how men talk, how men deal with things. Sometimes we correct, or no. When we correct, sometimes it's harsh and sometimes it's gentle, depending. But she'll understand those things. She'll understand the, the harsher side, the more stern and firm, you understand? And she'll also experience the more gentle and nurturing from her mother. That's why there's a balance in the house. The father is more stern, she is direct, you understand? The mother is more gentle with the kids. So the, the child will get both from the parents. She gets that balance, you understand? But today in the black community, we don't have that. We have black women raising kids that which they hate when they grow up. They complain about the black men, but who's raising these black men that they complain about is these single black women. This is crazy, okay? Now, um, let's watch this. Give me Suzanne, the history of Suzanne, chapter one, verse one. I'm gonna show you an example of when you are in your father's house, your father is teaching you, you're not gonna be like Miriam, who the Lord had to play with leprosy, to look like a white woman. But what? When you come from a good family and you were honoring your father and your mother, when you get married, guess what? Your husband will be what? Well, your husband, his, his bones will be threatened by your discretion. Watch this. The history of Suzanne. Read that. Chapter 1, verse 1. The history of Suzanne, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. There dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim. Mm -hmm. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chelsea, a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. So this woman, she was married, okay? And she feared the Lord. She was beautiful. She had wisdom. Go ahead. Her parents also were righteous mm -hmm. and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. You see that? So that means this sister, she brought an inheritance to her husband because why? She knew how to talk to a man because what? It says her parents also, her parents were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. So she knew how to submit to a man under her father's house. Now she was able to get married. Now she's a wife. You understand? And when you read the history of Susanna, the things that um, those wicked demonic Negroes were speaking evil of her, guess what? Guess the most I was able to defend her. Why? Because she was, she came, she came from a good home. She did not disrespect or bring an evil name of her father in the community. And that's why she was able to get married. And the way she conducted herself. And everybody knew, just like our foremother Judith, just like our foremother Sarah. You understand? And submission, submission as a sister will get you a husband. Submission will give you, make you a good name in Islam. Submission will give your name substance. When your name comes up, the man will say, oh, that's a good sister right there. You understand? Her mind is well instructed. Men want, women, men want women that are submissive. Okay? We don't want bulldozer or bulldog. We don't want that. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Judith 12 verse 14. Judith chapter 12 verse 14. We're still dealing with submission. The black man wants a woman that is submissive. Okay? Submission, that thing is the kryptonite to the black woman. Okay, read that. Let me give an example of a sister that was beautiful 
heard she was wise. Okay, watch what this is her mindset. Watch this thing right here. Read it. Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, mm -hmm. Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Stop right there. Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Who am I that I should go against my Lord's command in the house? Go ahead. Surely, whatsoever pleases him, I will do speedily. Stop right there. Whatsoever pleases him, whatsoever pleases my Lord, I will do speedily. You understand? You want some space? Okay, I'll give you some space. Let me do something here. Let me give you some time. You come back from a, a long day. Let me let me run some water. Let me massage your feet. There's a there's a there's a water already. There's a there's a there's a water in the bath already with oils and all that. Just like just as you like it. Go in there and soak yourself. When you're ready, you'll find clothes already ironed and all that. So you can go in there. Here's some slippers. Put them there. You want some tea? You want some a hot beverage? You want a strong drink? Right there. Is, is there is there anything else you want? You want me to be quiet? You want me to be silent? Is there anything I should do? No. Just give me a second. Oh, praise to the Lord. I'll give you some space. That's what we want. That is what we want. Brothers, you don't want that? Hmm. And that's uh, all praises. All praises the most high. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. Now, read again verse 14. Come on, come on. Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, hmm. Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Read. Surely whatsoever pleases him, I will do speedily, and it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. Now that's heavy right there. It says, and it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. So she found joy in pleasing, in pleasing her Lord. She found joy in that. She pleased her Lord in everything that he wanted. Why? Because this man right here, Manasseh, he kept the commandments. He was a wise man. He was, he was an alpha male. And guess what? Judith, she said what? I will do speed. Whatever it is that pleases my Lord, I'm going to do it speedily. You don't have to repeat anything to me. I already heard you. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm on it already. That's the type of woman we're looking for. Submissive, and she does things speedily. You understand? And she finds, she finds joy doing it because why? He says, it shall be my joy until the day of my death. Now, that's some heavy stuff. This right here, this, this type of sister right here, listen, you do all things for this sister. You do all things for this sister. Understand that. Silence, submission, those two things right there, I'm still going to the next characteristic, but this right here, this, bring, this will set an immense bone. This will give, this will encourage a black man. A sister that does this right here, and she does it with joy, guess what? This will set in his bone. Whatever the wife wants, the wife will get, as long as it's within the bounds of the law. Understand that? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. It's submission. No, it's silence, submission, sex. Let's deal with the third one. Silence, submission, sex. Let's deal with the next. Give me First Corinthians 7, verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. Silence, submission, sex. Read that. First Corinthians 7. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. Read. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Mm -hmm. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. You see that? It says the wife must render unto the husband due benevolence. That's sex. You understand? You must have sex with your husband. The hell is this? Go ahead. The wife has not power of her own body, mm -hmm. but the husband. Read. And likewise also the husband has not power of his own body, but the wife. So now the Lord is telling, listen, this, listen, sex is an integral part of marriage. That's why the first day when you, when you do it, you get together, guess what? The father brings the, the daughter and they sign the papers and all that and you go into the marriage chamber to consummate the marriage. So it is important. So the Lord is saying the wife must give unto the the wife must give unto the husband do benevolence, sex, because sex is an integral part of your marriage. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer mm. and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. For your, for your lack of self-control. It says, defraud ye not one the other. Don't defraud each other of sex in the marriage. Don't defraud one another of that because it's part of marriage. You must have sex. That's why it says to avoid fornication. Go back to 1 Corinthians 7, leave verse 2. So we understand what the Apostle Paul was explaining. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Mm -hmm. And let every woman have her own husband. Meaning what? If you're burning, you understand? It says, get a wife. If you are burning sexually, get a wife. You are burning sexually, get a husband. So here, the Apostle Paul was addressing this because these things are things that were happening in the church of Corinth, wives defrauding their husbands of sex. You see that? So guess what? Sex is part of marriage. So silent submission, sex. Sex, 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 and more sex in the marriage. Understand that? Okay, so don't defraud one another in terms of that. And here's another one. Give me the book of Proverbs, right? Give me Proverbs chapter 30. Okay, give me Proverbs 30 and verse 18. Proverbs 30 verse 18, because here's, here's another thing that, uh, hmm. let's read the Bible first, then I'll say something. Read that for me. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 18. Well, go ahead. There be three things which are too wonderful for me. Mm -hmm. Yay. For which I know not. He says three things. He says they are wonderful for me, but the fourth one I don't know. Go ahead. The way of an eagle in the air, meaning the way it flies, because the eagle is like it goes high altitude, okay? Because it's a bear of prey. He says that's a beautiful, it's a wonderful thing to, to behold. Read. The way of a serpent upon a rock, meaning a snake that is crawling on a rock. How is he able to do that? And he does not slip and fall. Read. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. How come it doesn't tip over? Go ahead. And the way of a man with a maid. That's the fourth one he said he doesn't know. Is that and the way of, of a man with a maid, meaning a man, a husband and his wife. He says, listen, whatever the husband and wife does, guess what? He says, those things I don't know. Because why? Every, every man loves different things. You understand when it comes to that? them and their wives, the things they do behind closed doors. But watch this. Here's the thing I want to bring up. Give me the book of Sirach 26, verse 12. Sirach 26, verse 12. Because, hmm, you know, sisters in the world, they be doing stuff in the world with men, you know. Then you come into the truth, you learn the scriptures, when then you, you find yourself, you end up proving a brother, and then you get married to a brother. Now, it's time for you to deal with your husband sexually. You'll be telling, mm -mm, me, I don't do those things. I don't do that. But you used to do those things before you came into this church. You see that? Read that. Sarah 26, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 12. Go ahead. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler mm -hmm. when he has found a fountain. Read. And drink of every water near her. Read. By every hedge will she sit down and open a quiver against every arrow. You see what the Bible is saying? is that she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. Now, it says, by every hedge will she sit down and open a quiver against every arrow. You see this part right here when it says she'll open her mouth as a thirsty traveler? You know what this is talking about? This is oral sex. This, what we're reading here, this is oral sex. So guess what? Oral sex is part of the laws of marriage. I bet you can see that, right? That's what it's saying right here. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he found a fountain and drink of every water near. Him. The key that we got, the, what, we, what, what we got, the problem here is in, with this verse is what? It says what? She drink of every water near him. That's the only thing that is not allowed. You brothers understand that, right? Yes, sir. This is the only thing that's not allowed. Drinking of every, every, drinking of every water near her. That's what's not allowed because that's adultery, that's fornication. But with your husband, this is fine. 
But some sisters will say, mm, me, I don't do that. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. No, sister. That's what your husband wants. That's what your husband will get. That's what we go back to Judith 12, verse 14. Go back to Judith. Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Read. Right. Then said Judith unto him, mm. Who am I now that I should gain, say, my Lord? Me. Right. Surely whatsoever pleases him, I will do speedily. Mm. And it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. That includes what we just read in Christ 26. It also includes that. That's part of marriage. You understand? Under the covenant of marriage, yeah, this is allowed. You can do this. Because some sisters will say, mm, me, I don't do that. Yeah, it's not lawful. It's not this. No, no, no. I'm showing you, brothers. It is lawful. Oh, praise to the Lord for that thing. Now, now what we're reading here is what? Is part of what that's what the black man wants, that's what the man of God wants. You understand? Silent submission sex. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 19. Judges, chapter 16, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And she made him sleep upon her knees. So what did she do? And she made him sleep upon her knees. Now, this is Delilah. This, what, this is what she did to Samson. Is that she made him sleep upon her knees. Meaning what? She did him good. And Samson, he just passed out. Go ahead. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. Okay, that's it on that. But the point I wanted to show you is that, is that she made him sleep upon her knees. Why? Because what we read in here, in terms of what? Sex. Sex is part of marriage. Understand that. Okay? So, guess what? It is part of marriage, and it must be had in the marriage. You cannot be defrauding your husband of sex in the marriage. You know what I'm saying? Hiding behind a headache. Hiding behind, no, I have got a headache. I'm tired. My back is edgy. And no, mm -mm. if your husband wants to be doing the split, he says, no, do this. You must know how to stretch like this. Guess what you must do, sister? You must learn how to stretch. You know, watch some videos and learn how to stretch your stuff. Learn how to stretch your legs. Do some exercises because that's what your husband wants. You will do that. If you love your husband that much, according to the scriptures, says, it will be my joy until the day of my death. Are you brothers getting this? Hmm? All praises, sir. This is the gospel of Christ. <laughs> this is the gospel. Okay? So that some of you are scared. Give me, give me Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 4. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Thy neck is like the tower of David, builded for an armory, whereon they hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. So now this is a man and his wife. This is a man talking about his wife. Go ahead. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins, mm -hmm. which feed among the lilies. I'm not going to go into graphic details on this. You just need to read the line. Go ahead. Until the day break. Until the what? The Until the day break. Until the night is over. Until the morning. Go ahead. And the shadows flee away. Wait. I will get me to the mountain of myrrh. Stop right there. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Read that again, verse 6. Come on. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 6. Hmm. Until the day break and the shadows flee away. Come on. I get me to the mountain of myrrh. We know that, what that we know what that mountain is. That's the metaphor. It says, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh. Go ahead. And to the hill of frankincense. Hmm. <laughs> Verse Verse Come on. Thou mm. art all fair, my love. Mm. There is no spot in thee. There is no spot in thee. Jump down to verse 9. Go ahead. Verse 9. Mm. Thou hast ravished my heart, my mm. sister, my spouse. Come on. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. Really? How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine? Is that she tastes better than wine? Go ahead. How much better is thy love than wine? And 
the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Than all spices, meaning men, frankincense, is uh, the smell of thine ornament than all spices. We know what that means. Go ahead. Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Mm. Honey and milk are under thy tongue. Mm. And the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. Mm. Go ahead. Come on. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Yo, 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 yo. Mm. This is a love letter. Brother, listen, man. This is beautiful. The Bible is beautiful, man. Go ahead. Come on. Mm. Thy plants are an orchid of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, campfire with spike nut. Mm. Listen. Now, what we just read, it's more to this, but guess what? This is a man talking about his wife. You understand? So guess what? Sex is part of marriage. It's an integral part of marriage. Why? Because why? It is important for that to take place in a marriage. You must consummate the marriage. Give me that in Tobit chapter 8. Okay? Tobit chapter 8. Read verse 4. Tobit chapter 8 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And after that, they were both shut in together. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise, and let us pray that God would have pity on us. You see what that is? That Tobias and his wife, they rose up out of the bed. What were they doing in the bed? They were consummating the marriage because why? They just got married. You understand? So they went into the bed, the, the wedding chamber, and consummated the marriage, meaning Tobias had sex with his wife. Okay, go ahead. Then began Tobias to say, Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Mm -hmm. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. You see that thing? So, guess what? Sex is an integral part of marriage. Guess what? It's fine if, 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 if the sister, she dresses nice, she's got wisdom, she, she know, she's got um, substance, she knows how to talk to men, you understand? She's submissive, she's gentle and all that. All of that, that's fine. And as all of that is good, all praise to the Lord. And if she's a freak in the bedroom, all praise to the Lord. We like it like that. She can be a freak all she wants in the bedroom. When she goes out, she's, she's, she's harmless as a dove. That's what we want. You see that thing? Hmm. I know some of you sins are slipping up in here. No, I cannot do that. Why is that? Why is leadership saying that? Mm, I know some of you are scared right now. Watch this. Now, the next, uh, the next thing that the black man is wants is, you see, sisters, I want you to understand this. The man, this is what men want. Silence, submission, sex, cooperation. That's the fourth one. You must cooperate. You must be cooperative. You understand? You must be cooperative with us. Let's go back to Jude 12. Let's go back to Jude chapter 12, verse 14. Let's read that again. Because this also goes into this. Jude 12, verse 14. Cooperation, that's the fourth one. Okay? As we want a sister that is cooperative. We don't want a sister that is combative, argumentative, disrespectful. You understand? We don't want that. Okay, read that. Jude 12, verse 14. Jude chapter 12, verse 14. Read. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Mm -hmm. Surely whatsoever pleaseth him, I will do speedily. And it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. And for this to take place, for this to happen, guess what was get was the what was what was the, the type of marriage that Judith and our forefather Manasseh had? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 2, verse 24. Genesis 2, 24. Our foremother, Judith, she has cooperated. That's what we read in it. It says, whatsoever pleases my Lord, I will do speedily, and it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. Genesis 2, 24. Read that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Come on. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. That means Manasseh, our forefather, and Judith, our foremother, they were one flesh. How? Watch this. Give me that instruction. 
If you just take out 7, there's 26. I'm going to show you how they were one flesh. Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Read. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Has thou, a wife, not. Has, thou a wife, has thou a wife after your mind? So our foremother Judith's mind was after her husband Manasseh's mind. Her mind was exactly like her husband's mind. Why? Because everything that the husband taught Judith, Judith followed her husband 100%. She submitted to him 100%. That's why it says, is thou a wife after your mind? Because for the two of you to be one flesh, the wife's mind must be according to the husband's mind. The husband's mind is according to Christ's mind. Christ's mind is according to the most like God's mind. That's the order. You understand? Read that again, verse 26. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Read. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. Mm -hmm. But give not thyself over to a light woman. He says, but do not give yourself over to a dumb sister. Don't give yourself to a dunder head. Why? Because her mind is not going to be after your mind. Her mind is going to be what? Because today's black woman's mindset is what? The thing that motivates the black woman today is herself. The black woman today's motivation is herself. She's self-centered. It's all about her. It's all about her and every and her. She don't even care about the kids when she's got one. When she's got children, she don't give a damn about the kids. It's all about her. That's the mindset of the black woman today. So therefore, her mind is not after the black man's mind. You understand? So in this truth, that thing must change. Your mind, sister, must be after your husband's mind. You are not married. Your mind must be after the leadership's mind because their mind is after Christ. Like we read in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. Okay? Now, give me the book of 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. This is the type of marriage that Judith, our foremother, had with our forefather Manasseh. The two, they were one flesh. Okay? 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Read. Now I beseech you, brethren, mm. by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. That we all do what? That ye all speak the same thing. That we must all speak the same thing. So man and wife, husband and wife, they must all speak the same thing. They too must be one flesh in mind, in spirit, and in body. Go ahead. And that there be no divisions among you. You see that thing? Because division is caused by what? By strife, contention, and evil and sin. Read. But that ye be perfectly joined together mm -hmm. in the same mind Come and on. in the same judgment. You see that thing? So Judith was joined perfectly together with her husband. Why? Because her mind was after her husband's mind. That's why he did not forsake that mind. You understand? That's where the two were one flesh. The reason why they were, they were one flesh, her mind was after her husband's mind. That's why she was cooperating. Whatever pleased her, whatever pleased her husband, she did it. She did it speedily, and she found joy doing it. She was cooperating. Okay? Watch this. Give me that instruct. No, no, give me Amos. Chapter 3, verse 3. Amos 3, verse 3. Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Read again. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Can two walk together except they be agreed? No, the two cannot walk together if you don't agree. So we, that's why it says the two shall be one flesh. So we want cooperation. We want sisters to be cooperative. We don't want a sister. We, we, listen, this is my program. You are coming to join my program as the head of the house. Your job is to execute the roles and responsibilities that, that the roles and responsibilities according to the hierarchy of what is marriage. And the sister must, be, must find joy in doing that because she's doing that to please her husband. Okay? Read again, verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Read. Can two work together except they be agreed? The two cannot work together if they do not agree. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse thirty-four. Watch this. First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse thirty-four. Mm -hmm. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. 
a wife and a virgin. A wife is married, a virgin, a young woman of, of, of marriageable age. Go ahead. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord. That's the virgin. The unmarried woman, that's the virgin who careth for the things of the Lord. Read. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Uh -huh. Come on. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, mm -hmm. how she may please her husband. You see that thing? But the one that's married, she cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. What is that going into? Ordering her house, pleasing her husband of, about whatever it is that the husband wants, her Lord wants, she will do it. She will not gainsay her Lord. She's cooperating. That's why it says, who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Whatsoever pleases him, I will do so speedily. You understand? So that woman, she's cooperative. That's the woman we're reading about here. It says, but she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband, and she will do it with joy. Because happy husband, happy wife. That's how the Bible puts it. Not happy, not happy wife, happy wife, happy life. No, no, that's the word. The Bible says, happy husband, happy wife. That's why whatever Judith, our foremother, did, guess what? Whatever the husband asked, wanted, she did it. And guess what? She became happy. She found joy in that because her husband was happy. You see how this works? That's what yes, the sir. man is looking for. For a sister that's cooperating. Okay? Watch this. Give me chapter 25 and 1. Ecclesiastical, chapter 25, verse 1. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified mm -hmm. and stood up beautiful both before God and man. Come on. The unity of brethren. That's the congregation. That's the church, the general assembly. Read. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Okay, applying the royal law. Go ahead. A man and a wife that agree together. You see that thing? A man and a wife that agree together. So who's supposed to agree? The wife agrees with the husband, according to as it is written. You understand? The deep, when a wife agrees with her husband, that thing is beautiful in the sight of the most High God. That's beautiful right there. That tells you the type of nation will come from these two, because they agree. The wife agrees with her husband, because their first agreement is what? The Bible. Their first agreement is the laws of God. They both agree with what the Bible says. And the wife understands her role. The husband understands his role. The wife submits to the role to submit to her husband. The husband submits to his role to submit to Christ. That's how it works. That's how we build a strong nation. Because we have strong marriages. Okay? Watch this. Give me the right 40 verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 40 verse 23. Read. A friend and companion never meet a miss. A friend and a companion will never meet for the wrong reason. Watch this. But above both is a wife with her husband. You see that thing? Above a friend and a companion is a wife with her husband. Why? Because that's a beautiful thing in the sight of God when they are in agreement. When they are one flesh. You understand? So guess what? We want silence, submission, sex, cooperation from the black woman. You understand? And that thing right there is beautiful in the sight of the most high God. The two shall be one flesh. Give me that in Matthew 19, verse 5 again. Okay. Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. Read. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and mm. shall cleave to his wife. And shall and what? They twain and shall cleave to his wife. And shall cleave to his wife. Come on. And they twain shall be one flesh. And they twain shall be one flesh flesh. This right here, it says, is beautiful in the sight of the Most High. Now, okay, let's deal with the next one now, the fifth one. The, guess what? We want silence, submission, sex, cooperation. We want a sister that is feminine. We don't want a masculine woman. The black, listen, we're tired of seeing these masculine women out here. Always want to be men. You understand? They always have their penis up all the time. The hell it is. <laughs> We don't want that. No. Whenever you talk to a sister, already she's got a penis up. A spiritual penis in her head because she thinks she's a man. No. Them days are over. We want a sister that's feminine. We want a feminine sister. Let's get the definition of feminine. 
Not a feminist, no, a feminine sister. Okay. Now read that, read that definition, feminine. Read it. The definition of feminine, mm -hmm. adjective, having qualities or an appearance traditionally associated with women. You see that if there's a feminine woman, she's got the qualities and appearance traditionally. You see that part right there? Traditionally associated with women. So a feminine woman, how is she gonna dress? This is what a feminine woman dressed like. Okay. Give me the book. Give me the book of give me the book of Judith. I think I want Judith. Let's go back there because there's something um in Judith that is actually written there. Which I think I want to touch on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. So, give me, um, give me, give me, give me the book of Esther. I think that let's just get it. Let's read it. Give me the one in Esther in the Apocrypha. I thought I saw something in there. It's written there, but obviously our foremother Judy kept the law. She was wearing a dress, but I want the one that really actually says the train of a dress. Okay. Esther 15. I think it's verse three somewhere. Esther 15, yeah, let's start at verse 2. We're going to read that. Esther chapter 15, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Start at verse 1. Esther chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. And upon the third day, when she had ended her prayer, you she know laid what? away. Hold on. You know what? Before you get there, before you get there, give me the book of Sarah. Give me Sarah. Give me Sarah 24. We coming back then. We're gonna go back to Judy to Esther 50. Give me Sarah 24, 23. Watch this. Sarah 24, verse 23. Come on. Ecclesiasticus chapter 24, verse 23. Read. All these things are the book of the covenant of the most high God. Mm -hmm. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. You see that? You see what our heritage is? Our heritage is our tradition. What is our heritage and our tradition? God's laws. God's laws is our heritage and our tradition. And in God's laws, the sisters are taught how to dress, to look feminine. You understand? Now, get Esther now, 15 verse 1. Esther, chapter 15 verse 1. Go ahead. And upon the third day, mm -hmm. when she had ended her prayer, she laid away her mourning garments, and put on her glorious apparel. You put on her glorious apparel as part of our tradition. Watch this, go ahead. And being gloriously adorned, mm -hmm. after she had called upon God, who is the beholder and savior of all things, she took two maids with her. Stop right there. You, you notice something about this verse? It says, and, and being gloriously adorned, she was glorious, she was looking bare to the bone. It says she put on a glorious apparel, after she had called upon God. So this is letting you know, there is no way that she was wearing pants because she called upon the Lord. She knew the laws of God. She understood our tradition. You see that? She was wearing a dress. Go ahead. And upon the one she leaned mm -hmm. as carrying herself daintily. Wait. And the other followed, bearing up her train. You see that thing? It says the other maiden, because she had a, she had made it. Is that the other maiden was was walking behind our poor mother Esther because she was the queen, and she was bearing up the train of a dress so that it does not drag on the floor. So she was wearing a long dress that dragged on the floor. Glorious apparel, you understand? Royalty. The maiden had to put had to lift up the the train of the dress just to carry it for her. So that the dress. Guess what? When a sister puts on a dress, she's feminine because that's a traditional, that's a traditional dress code associated with women. You brothers see that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's what we're reading here. Read again the definition of feminine. The definition of feminine mm -hmm. adjective. Having qualities or an appearance traditionally associated with women. Uh, you see that are so traditionally associated with women. So uh, traditionally, sisters, they, what did they wear? They put on dress, they put dresses on. They were not wearing pants because that's not royalty. You look like you are a man. 
We're not looking for many women. Okay? Get, get the law. You told me 22 verse 5. Let's get the law. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Wait. Okay. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Mm -hmm. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That's the law. Women are not supposed to wear that which belongs to men. Neither must men wear with that which belongs to women. You understand? But today, the black woman, she dresses like a man. She's a masculine woman. She's a manly woman. You understand? God says, a sister that puts on pants, she's an abomination to it. Guess what? She's an odious woman to the Lord. She's disgusting in the sight of God. Man that puts on a dress, he's disgusting in the sight of God. You understand? But tonight, tonight, tonight is the day of the women. Okay? So, let's get the synonyms of feminine. Hmm. Let's get there. Read that for me. Similar. Yeah. Womanly. Womanly. Feminine means womanly. So these women today wearing pants, you understand, wearing Tim's and all that, Timberland boots, you understand? No, those are not women. Those are men. Those are men women, okay? They are masculine women. Read, read that, that great outside, that one. Woman-like. Woman-like. Feminine, that's what the black men want. Go ahead. Ladylike. Ladylike. Mm. Go ahead. Girlish. Girlish, that's a girly girl. Go ahead. Female. Female. Mm. Go ahead. Soft. Soft. Because when you say soft, guess what? The black woman will say, mm, I'm an independent, strong black woman. You see that? You don't hear the other nations say this. The other nations, they are feminine, not the black woman. You understand? I'm getting on the sisters because it's true. Today, you see a lot of black men that are married. They are married to manly women. They are always arguing with them. The black man is even afraid to walk around freely in his own house. He's always walking on eggshells. Why? Because there's another man in the house who's going to tell him what to do. Go ahead. Delicate. Delicate. If you are feminine, you are delicate. Read. Gentle. Gentle. Mm. Tender. He's tender. Gentle, tender, delicate. Go ahead. Graceful. He's graceful. Read. Refined. Refined. Come on. Modest. Mm. Modest. Go ahead. Girly. Girly. Read. Feminal. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for feminine women. We're looking for gentle, tender, delicate, graceful, refined, modest, girly, ladylike, female, soft women. That's what we're looking for. And that's what the Lord said. You understand? That's what the Most High God is saying. I'm going to show you that. Okay? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, read that. Drama. Of or denoting a gender of nouns and adjectives conventionally regarded as female. You see that conventionally regarded as female. So whenever you hear a black woman says, I'm an independent, strong black woman, she's telling you, says, I'm a man. I just have makeup on. Hmm. You understand? That's what she's saying to you. I'm a man. I just have to happen. I just happen to have makeup on. I'm confused. I don't know what I am. You understand? So if she cannot accept herself to be a woman and she dressed like a man, are you going to accept her? Who's going to accept her? She cannot accept the fact that she's a woman and she's supposed to act, dress, and talk like one. She wants you to accept, just accept me the way that I am. But you cannot accept yourself the way God made you. Why should I accept you? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Brothers, we must have standards that the Lord has given us standards this day. Now, I know sisters are going to hate this class, but oh, praise the Lord. I don't give a damn. Okay? It is what it is. Now, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy. Okay? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 56. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 56. Read. Really? The tender and delicate woman among you, mm. which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness, and tenderness. Stop right there. 
So our sisters back then, they were like this. They were tender, they were delicate. It says the tender and delicate woman among you, which will not adventure to set the soul of a foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Meaning what? Our sisters, they, are, they, were, they were feminine, they were delicate, they were tender. So much so that she could not even walk and put her feet on the ground. That's how feminine they were. That's how soft and gaily lady like they were. Not today, black women. These masculine sumo wrestler black women. No. Listen, let's get the definition of delicate. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get the definition of delicate. We need to get this thing. Read it for me. That's it right there. Delicate. Read it. The definition of delicate. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Very fine in texture or structure. Hmm. Of intricate workmanship or quality. You see that delicate means quality. So our sisters that say Yena, she is an independent black sumo wrestler woman. Listen, that's not a woman. That's a man. Okay, that's a man. They don't even say hello anymore. They say it's up. They say who's it? Yeah, that's what. That's how they talk now. Okay, they stand like men. They slouch. They don't cross their legs and sit on and sit down because they have a dress on. No, they are so used to wearing pants. When the sister sits down, she opens the legs. Even when she's wearing a mini skirt, her legs are open because she's so used to being a man. When she now has to put on a dress, she's confused. You understand? Now watch this. Read the, the synonyms. Synonyms. Mm. Fine. Fine. Exquisite. Mm. Go ahead. Intricate. Read that. Elegant. Elegant. Mm. Graceful. 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 Okay. Let's see. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Read that last part. That one right. Fragile. Fragile. You know what that goes into? Give me the book of First Peter 3. I'm going to show you that. Okay. Yeah, first Peter, first Peter chapter three, verse seven. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. Mm -hmm. You know what? Hmm. Let's get the definition of fragile. Read that. Read this one. The definition of fragile of a person not strong or sturdy, delicate and vulnerable. Is delicate and vulnerable. Delicate, vulnerable. Delicate, vulnerable. Let's get the similar words for fragile. Similar. Mm. Weak. Weak. What? Weak. 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 Now, give me First Peter three now. I'm gonna show you that. First Peter three verse seven. Watch this. First Peter chapter three verse seven. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Come on. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. As unto the what? As unto the weaker vessel. You see, as unto the weaker vessel, meaning delicate and vulnerable. As unto the delicate and vulnerable person. As unto the fragile person. That's what he's talking about, ves fragile vessel. So our sisters are fragile, delicate, and vulnerable vessels of the Lord. That's why they need us to protect, to provide, to what? To take care of them. Their job is to submit, to be silent, to, sub to be submissive, to give us sex, okay? To be cooperative and to be feminine. How hard is that? Because when I'm going to get on the black man, the requirement that for the black man, listen, heavy stuff, okay? Now, um, let's go back. Give me now, give me the book of Jeremiah 6 and 2. Give me Jeremiah 6 verse 2. I don't think we read, I don't think we go back to you, Tommy 28 real quick. Go back there. 28 verse 56, go back. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 56. Read. The tender and delicate woman among you, mm -hmm. which would not adventure to set the soul of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. So now, this type of women, this is the type of women that we want back in Islam. We're not looking for this sumo wrestler, you understand, bodybuilder women that were that, that trying to be 
or equal or they want you to be on the same level as a man. No, 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 no. Mm. That's not a man. That's a woman. I mean, that's not a woman. That's a man. Okay? Is that the tender and delicate woman among, among us, the black men? Watch this. Let's get the definition of the word tender. Hmm. Read that, read that definition. The definition of tender, mm -hmm. adjective. Come on. Showing gentleness, kindness, and affection. You see that? So when it says that the tender and delicate woman among you, we went over delicate, now we're going over tender. Tender says showing gentleness, kindness, and affection. Guess what? Many of our sisters today, they call them themselves uh, both chick, both B and all that. They are not tender. They are not gentle. They are not kind. They are not affectionate. They are not. Okay? The, the opposite, what are they? Read that. Opposite. Hmm. Hard-hearted. That's, that's our sisters today. Those that hate the laws of God, those that hate submission, those that cannot keep their mouth shut, those that are not proper, they are uncooperative. Okay. Hard. It is hard hearted. Okay, read. Careless. Callous. Read. Unsympathetic. Unsympathetic. Both B. Okay. Not what? Not tough. Not tough. You see that? Now read that. Let's read the synonyms. Read. The synonyms of tender. Mm -hmm. Caring. Mm -hmm. Kind. Kindly. Kind-hearted. Kind-hearted. Come on. Soft-hearted. That's the, that's the delicate that we read. Soft. Go ahead. Tender-hearted. Tender-hearted. Read. Compassionate. Compassionate. Come on. Sympathetic. Sympathetic. Read. Warm. Hmm. Warm-hearted. Warm-hearted. Okay. Read that. Gentle. Gentle. Hmm. Benevolent. Benevolent. That's what we read in First Corinthians. Go ahead. Generous. Hmm. Giving. Giving. Come on. Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Go ahead. Touchy feely. Touchy feely. Come on. Affectionate. Affectionate. Read. Loving. Loving. Come on. Emotional. That goes into what? That goes into feminine. Read. Soft. Mm. Adoring. Adoring. Mm. Read that. Lovey Davy. Lovey Davy, come on. Romantic. No, but today, the black woman is expecting the black man to be romantic. You cannot make this up. They want the black man to be romantic. Mm? They want the black man to be a gentle man, mm? meaning a simp. If he's not there, they say, no, he's a. He's is what toxic masculinity. No, 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 no. We have toxic femininity today. That's what we have. Okay. Um, okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. So guess what? This is the type of cut. This, this is the type of uh, disposition we're looking for. This is what the man is looking for. So sisters that are always trying to be equal to the man, they've got a set of balls also. Listen, we stay away from you type of people. Okay, now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 6 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. Mm -hmm. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. You see that? I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So guess what? Feminine sisters, they, they fall under this category. What we read in Deuteronomy 2865, they fall under that. You understand? Tender and delicate. The weaker vessel. Because when you, when you read stuff like this, the black woman will say, yeah, but you know, the black woman has been through a lot. Sister, listen, we've been hearing that story ever since we grew up. The black woman is being alone. What about the black man? You know, society has been catered to listen and cater to the black woman. Where is the black man's voice at? Nobody listens to the black man. When the black man speaks now to speak his mind, they say, no, he's hateful. They say, no, the black man is full of what? He's full of hatred. He's full of anger. He's full of this. When we speak the truth. So they deflect the truth with what? With trigger words. No, but he hates women. 
Hey, the misogynist. Hey, the listen. No. The black man has been through a lot more than any man on this earth. I'm gonna tell you straight. You understand? The the war on earth today is at the bottom of all nations. Even the black woman, they put the black woman on top of the black man. So I don't want to hear that type of argument. Okay. Now, give me, give me the book, give me Galatians 5, because I want to show you something. The opposite of these characteristics we just read, okay, tender, delicate. Caring, kind, kindly, kind-hearted is the opposite of because everything, those these synonyms we just read, I'm gonna show you what they are. Give me Galatians 5 verse 22. Watch this. I'm gonna show you what being feminine actually is. Hmm, watch how this comes together. Watch this. Give me Galatians 5 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Mm -hmm. Joy. Go ahead. Peace. Read. No suffering. Hmm. Gentleness. What? Gentleness. Gentleness, meaning tender. So being feminine, that's the fruit of the spirit. These masculine sumo wrestler, Bruce Lee type of chick, mm -mm, though they don't have the fruit of the spirit. He or she wants to be tongue -tongue. No. She don't have the fruit of the spirit. Read that thing again, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. joy, Ray. peace, come on, long suffering, gentleness, mm. goodness, faith. You see that? Goodness, faith. All of these, these are the fruit of the Spirit. So when a sister is feminine, she's got the fruit of the Spirit. You understand? Because guess what? As sisters that don't want to change, you understand? You know how they hide, they, they hide behind the fact, they hide behind this lie. Nobody, they, you know, that means you want a weak sister that you can control. You know what they are saying? I don't want to be submissive. That's what she's saying. Don't get it twisted. All she's saying is, I don't want to be submissive to a man. That's all she's saying. No, you want the black woman, you want, you want us to be weak and soft so that you can tell us what to do and control us. Listen, what she's telling you says, I'm not silent, I'm not submissive, I'm gonna use sex as a weapon, and I'm not going to be cooperative to you, I'm not feminine. That's what she's saying. So when you hear stuff like that, you must just go through the list of characteristics that we're going over and say, oh, that's the one, she don't wanna change this one. She's not marriage material, she's not ready, okay? You understand? Now, watch this, I'm gonna show you something. But the sister who's not feminine, this is the spirit she's got. Read verse, read verse 19. Galatians 5 verse 19. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. Read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Mm -hmm. Adultery. Read. Fornication. Fornication. Adultery, fornication. Mean what? She's not feminine, this one. She what? She likes to sleep around. She likes to fornicate. Go ahead. Uncleanness. She's unclean. She don't bath. She don't have good hygiene habits. She wears pants. That means she's got yeast infections and smells down there. Why? Because of not applying God's laws and put on a dress so that what? She can get some air. She's going to get a pH can be balanced. Go ahead. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. That's why they dress up naked to show off their ass and all that. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry. They worship themselves. Read. Witchcraft. They want to bewitch the men who, who are void of understanding. Simple men. Go ahead. Hatred. And they hate men. Come on. Variance. Stop right there. Variance. They have a variant spirit. Let's see what that means. What is the definition of variance? Okay. They've got a variant spirit. Now read that. Variance. Come on. The definition of variance. Mm -hmm. Now. The effect or quality of being different, divergent, or inconsistent. That's the mindset of our sisters today. The things they want, they are not willing to prepare themselves to receive the things that they say they want. You understand? Now, let's see. The type of sister who don't have the fruit of the spirit, who's not feminine, but she's masculine, this is the characteristic she has. Read that. Um, read that one. Right? Read. Similar. Disagreement. She likes to disagree. She's not cooperative. She's not submissive. That means she's not silent. 
Okay? She likes to disagree. Cause disagreements, come on. Conflict. She likes to cause conflict because conflict is a smooth thing to say, I don't want to take responsibility or accountability. I don't want to examine myself. Read? Divergence. Diverge. You just want to diverge. Go the hell off. Read that. Contrast. Contrast. Read? Distinction. Mm -hmm. Contradiction. Contradiction. She likes to contradict. She's got a combative spirit. Okay? Read, uh, read that. At odds. At odds, meaning at disagreement with. Read that. Out of line. Out of line, out of order. Read. Out of step. Out of step. Come on. In opposition. In opposition. Read. Conflicting. Conflicting. She likes, she likes, she's, a, she's addicted to conflict. You know what it's called? She's addicted to drama. She likes to argue. Because somebody that likes to argue all the time, yep, 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 they are letting you know, I don't really want to listen to you because if I have to listen to you, that means I have to do what you say. I have to examine myself. I have to stop playing the victim. I have, I have to stop blaming everybody else for my issues. I don't want to examine myself. I don't want to change. That's what they're telling me. Okay, go ahead. Clashing. Clashing. Read. Disagreeing. Disagreeing. Differing. Differing. Come on. Contrary. Contrary to anything what the Bible says. Read. Incompatible. The two of you will not be one flesh. Read. Contradictory. Contradictory. Come on. Irreconcilable. Irreconcilable, meaning you cannot reconcile with this person. Why? Because they always at variance with you. They are always at all. You know what they are doing? They are competing with you. They are competing with you. They are competing for the role that God gave you as the head of the house. She wants to be on the same level. You don't want that type of state. That type of she's not feminine. Okay? She's not cooperative. Okay? Now, um, go back to Galatians 5. There's a, there's a word I want there. Galatians 5 is 20. Read that again. Galatians chapter 5 is 20. Come on. Idolatry. Hmm. Witchcraft. Read. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Emulation. Emulation. Let's see what emulation means. Read that. The definition of emulation. Come on. Now. Mm -hmm. Effort to match or surpass a person or achievement, typically by imitation. You see that thing? An effort to match or surpass a person or achievement, typically by imitation. So guess what? Sisters that like to emulate, they want the opposition. They don't understand the hierarchy and roles and responsibilities in the marriage. They don't understand the hierarchy roles and responsibility of men and women. They don't understand that. They want to what? They want to surpass you. They want to match or surpass you. Isn't that the same thing that the serpent told Eve? It says, you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. That's emulation. So you don't want to be married to a sister like this. Who wants to compete or match or surpass you? Because guess what? You're not going to have peace in the house. Your children are going to be confused. Your children will be defiled. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? So those are not the same. You stay away from that type of sister. She's always finding an issue with everything. You know why they do that? Because they don't want to take responsibility. They always make excuses. Whenever you get technical, you get to you, you deal with the details of what they are saying, then they start to interrupt you when you speak. They want to speak over you. They want to overtalk you. Why? Because you get into the deeper details of what they are doing. So because they don't want to hear, they don't want to hear the truth about themselves, they will argue with you, they will speak loud, they'll just be loud and stubborn and obnoxious, just so they don't have to change. You understand? But they, you, they want you to accept them as a bundle of a whatever, but they cannot accept themselves. Red flag, you stay away from that demon. That's a legion of demons, okay? Now, Let's see. I think there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Galatians 5. Yes. Galatians 5 is 20. Read that. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Go ahead. Idolatry, mm -hmm. witchcraft, Come on. hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, Stop right seditions. Right. Right. Let's see. What's the definition? Let's get some definitions of strife. Okay. Read that. Strife. The definition of strife. Mm -hmm. Noun. Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Mm. Conflict. You see that? That's not a feminine sister. She likes to call strife. Is an angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Basic things, they'll just argue you down. You know why? Because they don't want to change. That's the reason. Conflict. Okay, read that. Similar. Mm. Conflict. Great. Friction. Come on. Discord. Causing problems. Read. Disagreement. Uh, Variance. We read that earlier. Read. Dispute. Dispute. Argument. That's it right there. Argument. They like to argue. Okay. Read that. Bickering. Bickering. Come on. Controversy. They like to cause controversy. Read. Contention. They always contentious. Read. Disharmony. They love drama. Come on. Ill feeling. Always offended by the by the by the laws of God. Ill feeling. Read. Bad blood. Bad blood. Read. Hostility. They are hostile. Read. Animosity. Mm. Falling out. You see that thing. So what we reading here is what we reading the the, the the this is the works of the flesh. This is not the fruit of the spirit. You understand? So, but the most like God is telling us that sisters that are feminine, they don't have these qualities. But sisters that are masculine, they have these, they have these, these are not qualities. They have these flaws right here and they don't want to fix them. They don't want to change. They don't want to repent. They don't want to get their minds right. They are always blaming people that they, 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 they've been with in the past. They're always blaming. Losers always blame everything on everyone else. Winners, they change things. Okay? Losers, they remain losers. That's what the Bible says. Okay? Now, give me, I'm going to show you something. Feminine. Give me Genesis 24 verse 15. I'm going to show you an example of a of, of a foremother that was feminine. Okay. Genesis 24. Read verse 15. Genesis chapter 24, verse 15. Read. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. Read. This is our former mother, Rebecca, now. Come on. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. Stop right there. And the what? And the damsel was very fair to look upon. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Yeah. Mm. This is beautiful right here. I want you to read the definition of damsel. Okay. Read that. The definition of damsel. Mm -hmm. Noun. A young unmarried woman. A young unmarried woman, right? Watch this. Young lady. Young lady. Can you talk about, can you use young lady in the same sentence, same sentence as Dineorana? Can you do that? No, sir. You cannot. Can you use the same sentence, young lady, describing Kanimba? You can't. You cannot do that. Okay, read that. Girl. You can't. Read. Miss. You cannot. It, they are incompatible. <laughs> Read that. Maid. Maid. Read. Maiden. Maiden. Okay. Now let's see. Read that. Senorita. Can you, you listen? Can you put the same word with um, Zoto Abandu with this? <laughs> you cannot call Zoto Abandu Senorita. <laughs> Listen, you can't because why? They are not feminine. They are masculine women. That's why men that are dealing with them, they are dealing with them like men. They sexing them and giving them babies and dropping them and leaving them. Yeah, because if you want to be a man, 
men will deal with you like men. Okay? Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. Okay? Read that again, verse 16. Genesis chapter 24, verse 16. Read. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, mm -hmm. a virgin. Neither had any man known her. Go ahead. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So now what we're reading is that our poor mother Rebecca says she was beautiful. You understand? A virgin and she had not had sex also. Watch this. Now, let's see when she was with her husband. Genesis 26, verse 8 now. Watch this. Genesis chapter 26, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at the window mm. and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. I, our forefather Isaac, he says, was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. What were they doing? They were holding hands. They were being romantic, enjoying each other's company and all that. Can you do that with a masculine woman? No. You cannot do that with a masculine woman. You'll hold her hand. As you're traveling, before you know it, you start to realize that you're losing sensation on your finger. <laughs> you're going to lose sensation all of a sudden. What's going on? Because she's masculine. She'll be squeezing like she's squeezing something hard. You understand? Feminine. She's not feminine. You cannot sport with a, with a masculine woman. You cannot. You understand? You'll be thinking to take a walk with a woman, you understand? In the, when you take a walk with the sister, you're talking about things, I mean, scriptures, life, and all that stuff. You, you're reflecting on what the Bible says about foremothers and foremothers. Guess what? She'll just get offended right then and there. And guess what? She goes back home by herself. She'll leave you right there. That's not a feminine woman. You understand? That's not a woman that deserves to get on your program as the son of God. You understand? No. Mm -mm. It's time for the black men to set some standards according to the laws of God. You understand? And the women must match up to that standard. That's how God set it up and we're going to roll like that. Understand that thing. Okay? Now, give me mm, yeah, re, give me give me Ecclesiastes 9 verse 9. I'm almost done. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9. Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9. Go ahead. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. You see that thing? It says, Live joyfully. You can only do this with a feminine sister. A sister that is feminine, she's delicate. You understand? She's gentle and all that. You can do that with that. With? Which he has given thee under the sun mm -hmm. all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life with? and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. So the Lord says, live joyfully with the wife of thy youth. So guess what? You cannot do that with a feminine, with a, with a masculine sister. These mainly women out here? No. These mainly women, we don't want them. We don't need, we don't need you. Because you cannot deal with us. Masculine women will do this. Give me Proverbs 14 verse 1. Femi a feminine sister will do this. But I'll show you what a masculine woman does. Read that Proverbs 14 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. Go ahead. Every wise woman buildeth a house. You see, that's a feminine sister, I think. This is a virtuous woman. It says, every wise woman buildeth a house. Because a feminine sister... What makes her wise is because she understands that she's not a man. She understands that the energy that she must project to this man is a feminine energy. But the masculine women, this is what she will do. Go ahead. But the foolish pluck it down with her hands. That's the masculine woman. How does she pluck it down? Whenever there's something that needs to be dealt with in the house, she puts the penis up. Yeah. She's now a man. She just transforms into a man right then and there. Demonic activity. You understand? She will pluck the house down. That's not a woman that you should you can repose yourself with there. 
like he says in the wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. You cannot impose yourself with that type of spirit. Now, brothers, understand, it is important to have standards because what we just, what we just went over is the standards that all men of God must have. Give me that in Isaiah 62, okay? Isaiah chapter 62, um, read, verse, read verse 10. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10. Go ahead. Go through, go through the gates. Mm -hmm. Prepare ye the way of the people. Go ahead. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. What did the Lord say we must do? Lift up a standard for the people. We must lift up a standard for the people. We must set standards. As black men, we need to have standards, okay? And the most that God has laid it down for us, we must have standards as black men. What we want in a sister. We want what? She must be silent, submissive. You understand? Sex. We want silence, submission, sex, cooperation, and femininity. That's what we want. You understand? How many of you brothers don't, don't agree with that? Let's see. Because some simple will raise up his hand. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, please, please, please. How many of you brothers agree with that? Say, ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh, I'm going to end the class right there, brother. Go pray to the Lord. Go pray to the Most High God. Okay, let's break bread. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. These do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that last. Thank you to the Lord.